everybody, mm. and welcome to another edition of The Carton Show. Great to have you here as we inch ever so slowly towards the championship games in the NFL. And I know what you're saying, but then what am I going to do? Plenty of stuff to do. We'll get to it later on. Jack Harrington is David Jacoby. All right, Jacoby. The main man right here, Green Bay Packer Hall of Famer, Mr. Greg Jennings. And hand to pants to my left, Super Bowl champion, Mr. Willie Very Colon. Handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome. Oh, there, there you go. Thank you. Neither That's of impressive. these guys, no, three of these guys were not invited to Las Vegas with Aaron Rodgers yesterday. He that. took the entire offensive line of the New York Jets out oh. to Vegas. Uh, 1200 bucks a man for the round of golf. All on Aaron Rodgers. More on that later on. Plus, before we get to headlines, you may see over my shoulder right here, if you guys want to get that on camera, we are going to finally bring one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL to the party. Okay. Because if you notice, there's one guy missing. And a little bit later on, we will make it official. The Detroit Lions got a guy at the table. So we got that. That'll be coming up in just a little bit. But first, Tuesday morning, what do we call it? Headlines. All right, just big stuff because Debo Samuel hurt that shoulder again. Back in October, hairline fracture of that shoulder. Missed only a couple weeks, but they don't win without Debo Samuel on the field. And right now, Greg Jennings, they are telling us it is 50 50, 50, 50 oh, that he plays okay. on Sunday. Go. Yeah, this would be a big loss if he's not on the field on Sunday simply because of what he provides, not only offensively, but what he poses as a defensive threat. Like, you have to match up with him from a personnel standpoint, and that would be challenging and a lot easier for an opponent if he's not on the so field. So, question for you, really, Clark. More on this, of course, throughout the show. Yeah. You still got Ayuk. You still got Kittle. You still got Christian McCaffrey, obviously. Uh, why is it that him being out has uh, makes them a, a winless team this year. Because he's an instant offense, right? You put the ball in his hands, he knows how to get busy. But they have enough in the stable, right? You got Juan Jennings who stepped up being in that game, and they also have Elijah Mitchell who you can also see out there. So I don't think there's really too much cause for concern, but Debo's different because not only can he run the ball, he's a guy you can put in motion, put the ball in his hand on sweeps and all that, and he can get uh, uh, get north and south. So uh, he's, he's going to be fine. Like, yeah, well, he's going to be right. fine. He may have broken his shoulder. He'll be all right. That's what I'm talking right there. I'm on that, of course, uh, throughout uh, today and uh, throughout the week because that is the big storyline right now uh, with San Francisco. They're pretty good uh, uh, elsewhere. Headline number two, uh, a matchup we've not gotten in the postseason yet that everybody's excited for because you can make the argument these are the two best quarterbacks right now in right now. the NFL. Right now. You got Lamar Jackson. You got Patty Mahomes. And let's be honest, even though the Kansas City Chiefs are not the two seed, they're the three seed, and it was not their usual dominant year this is the kind of matchup Hollywood loves. Yep. Lamar Jackson about to win his second MVP against the best quarterback in football. Yeah, and this is a legacy game, right? We talk about it time after time. Patrick Mahomes being a two-time Super Bowl champ MVP. We know who he is. He's going to be wearing a gold jacket one day. But this is Lamar's opportunity to go get it, right? Because when you talk about an outfit like the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes doesn't make the big mistakes. You know who he is. You know he's going to bring yeah. to the table. Can Lamar from the neck up bring his agent? And I would tell you this, Greg Jennings and David Jacoby, there's no disputing the fact the Baltimore Ravens are the better team. You, I'll, I'll take Mahomes. Obviously, Mahomes is Mahomes is Mahomes. Yep. Right. But the Baltimore Ravens, and it ain't close, are the better team. Yeah, and that's what adds the pressure to a team like uh, the Baltimore Ravens and a guy like Lamar Jackson because can you deliver with knowing you have the better team? Right. It, the better defense, the better yeah. offense, all of the things. So can you outplay the guy that you just mentioned? No, yeah. there's an old line in uh, Greek mythology. It goes like this. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Yes, sir. Well, uh, the crown right now is the Baltimore Ravens, their favorite. They're at home, and he's going to win his second MVP. Now you got to get the job done. That's, that's what I love about this particular matchup. In my opinion, it's the two best quarterbacks in the league, but it's also the inverse of, of sort of the reputation. Yeah. Patrick, Patrick Holmes, doesn't matter what happens in the regular season, you can't beat him in the playoffs. Lamar Jackson, great in the regular season, can't win in the playoffs. <laughs> right. One of those two things is about to change. It's almost like the Eli Manning, Peyton Manning argument, right? Yes. Thank you. See what I did right yeah. there? Great Thank job. You. Yeah. Great job. By the way, nice haircut. Thank I you. I just noticed that. Yeah, yeah. my, my right. whole family didn't even notice when yeah. I came home yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and very quickly, yeah, weird. Your, your third headline. <laughs> Uh, this comes out of the category of, honestly, who cares? Uh, Josh, <laughs> Josh Allen was asked if he's concerned about the Bills championship window closing. And uh, he's not. He's not. Uh, he should be. 
Uh, by the way, they haven't even gone to an AFC Championship game. Yeah. Right? They haven't won a Super Bowl. They haven't gotten to a Super Bowl. Yet. So I'm not sure why we call it a championship window. But if you've got that guy quarterbacking for you, obviously you're always going to be in it, right? Yep. Yeah, you got a shot. You got Josh Allen. especially. With Tell you what Josh Allen should do, sorry to interrupt you. He should try to go to the NFC. Then he'd have a shot to get to a Super Bowl. Because that dude obviously cannot beat Patrick Mahomes right now. Yeah, but he said he believes in himself, right? Yeah. That has to mean something, real. Right? No? I mean, uh, it doesn't, though, Willie. Uh, we're professional athletes. Yeah. <laughs> now, if he came out and said, it don't matter, I got $250 million bucks guaranteed well, coming my way, yeah. that would be the honest answer. Yeah. But what do you expect the guy to say 24 hours after a home loss in the playoffs? Do you think it's over for the rest of your life? Yeah. What's he supposed to say to that? Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's definitely not saying no. Like You did not get a haircut. I did not. You don't care. <laughs> All right, coming up while we're getting ready for the championship. You didn't get a haircut yeah. either. Yeah, it ain't nothing to cut. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, as we get ready for the championship games, there is big news here in a lot of major cities in the NFL. One of those cities is, of course, Philadelphia. Ugh. Big press conference 24 hours away, Ugh. and you're not going to believe who's a part of it and who's not. We'll explain right after this. Hey, welcome back to the Card Show. While we get ready for all the NFL action, the guys told me this morning that uh, the Stanley Cup Finals are going into Game 7 tonight, so looking oh, forward to that. But last it? night, Game 6, between the Jets and the Bruins, there's a guy in the Bruins named Brad Marchand. Okay. And yeah. he was playing a little defense with his um, – with his, his balls. Oh. Um, play the video. Slap shot McGinty here. Uh, Brad Marchand. Oh. 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 Yeah, that one hurts. It stings a little bit. And, of course, uh, can you go full screen on that and show it again <laughs> so we get the full, full screen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. What, what did the trainer say to him right there? <laughs> The trainer's like, I know how you feel, buddy. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. And, yeah. of course, the worst just, just part breathe. about... about to breathe. breathe. The, yeah, one more time. Oh! oh the worst part breathe. about that, as every man has experienced, is that uh, God-induced 10-second delay yeah. between impact and pain. Uh, and he felt it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yo, do guys in the NFL wear cups or no? No, I didn't wear a cup. No, did you ever wear a yeah. cup? No, no, I didn't wear no cup. I feel yeah. like if you got hit in your nuts, you deserve it. I was hoping that you guys wore cups because – What? You just seem so more well endowed than me. Right. I was hoping it was all cup, but apparently no. uh, it wasn't. So I'm having a tough day. Uh, in any event, all good luck to low. Brad Marchand uh, singing soprano uh, the rest of uh, his life. Uh, from the <laughs> that's a question I'm not going to ask. Let's just, well, I'm just let's saying, just like, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. pretty impressive. That's yeah. not a cup. Yeah. Um, I thought you were just watching the football, correct? We are. No. <laughs> I, didn't know. I didn't know you were looking at us. I get wow. bored easily. Uh, fit up Eagles having a press conference, not today, but tomorrow. Uh, Nick Sirianni is going to be at the press conference, which means he's not being fired unless they come up with the most unique way. I would love that. To fire a guy, which would be awesome. Oh, Watch the box of paper right now. Yeah. How he rolls with Sirianni. <laughs> That'd be great. Has he been fired on a presser? No. Flip but a it, coin. Heads it'd be tails. awesome. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. By the way, you're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's Nick Sirianni. It's the general manager, Harry Roseman. You all know the stories from yesterday that uh, Desai, who was the defensive coordinator, got demoted. He's out. Matt Patricia's contract expires. Nope. He's out. So they will be hiring a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator. And it seems like three years with legitimate success. You know, they've gone to a Super Bowl. They made the playoffs, obviously, last this past year. That Nick Sirianni uh, got a stay of execution in Philadelphia. The thing that I don't get about it, guys, is why wouldn't Philadelphia, at the bare minimum, kick the tires on a Harbaugh or a Belichick? That's what I don't get. You know, like I said, it, it, turnover is hard, man. Like, and I understand you let go of Brian Johnson, you needed to, right? You're talking about Jalen Hurts having 15 interceptions, you know, versus the Niners, Cavs, and Seahawks. They only scored 20, damn near right. 20 points, on and on and on. Overall, the head coach, man, He's a guy you have to believe can make it right. He's never been in this position. So I can understand giving him a mulligan this year. And I understand 10-1, and one, all in all, whatever this team went through. Right. But getting in that new head coach to kind of run this team and be, and be the guy for the face of this team, you know, I, I just you got to believe that he's going to make it right. Hopefully he can. He didn't really show it during the season. But I can understand them giving another it shot. It also means that the, the problems that we think exist on this team may have been overstated. 
Because if, yeah. if the locker room had legitimately turned on him at the level it seemingly was reported on a daily basis, you know, starting with that Seattle loss, really, and on through the Giant games, the Cardinal games, and the embarrassing playoff loss, if the locker room had really turned on him, you don't bring him back, right? Yeah, it would be hard to bring him back if the locker room had really turned on him and he was identified as the main issue. Uh, the reason why you keep Sirianni is because of track record and previous sure. success. Like, it would be hard to fire a coach having just made a Super Bowl right. appearance and then a, po a postseason, following that Super Bowl appearance up with a postseason uh, appearance Lost, with yeah. an 11 win season. And you were, what, 10 and 1 at a point? That's in right. The season. So it fell apart. But if it had fallen apart and you just completely missed the postseason and he was an issue, sure. I think you have a stronger case. But to sell the fact that we're just going to fire this coach after he's accomplished that in such a short a period of time of being a head coach, that would be hard to just find a replacement, obviously outside of Bill Belichick. Yeah, and what's weird about that is, and we'll get more into this a little bit later on in the show, uh, it seems like I've overvalued the way I thought NFL teams felt about both Bill Belichick and uh, Jim Harbaugh, obviously. obviously coming out of college. Harbaugh's getting another interview out in L.A. with the Chargers. So he's met with Atlanta. He's met with the Chargers. Belichick's met with Atlanta a couple times, et cetera. And I'm sitting there saying to myself, guys like this aren't available every day of the week. Yeah. And you have teams that – have the talent in the locker room, maybe all they need is a different voice or a coach or a guy with winning experience, and there's not one. Two of those guys are available, and I'm totally shocked and surprised that I overestimated the way teams feel about those two guys. I'm more shocked about Jim Harbaugh than I am Bill Belichick. The only reason why I'm not shocked about Belichick is because you feel like the, the window that you have for him is shorter. That's meaning, fair. I agree with that. Meaning you only got a few yeah. more years sure. left. And yeah. if you have a young quarterback, you want to pair him with a head coach that you feel like they can grow together. That's not, in my mind, Bill Belichick. Now, Jim Harbaugh, on the other hand, that would be him, So, which is why I look at that one and I kind of scratch my head. to be fair, around. Harbaugh is more of the, the quarterback guru, and you do have a young quarterback, obviously, in Jalen Hurts, whereas Belichick is the defensive guru who's obviously had great right. success, but he is a defensive-minded head coach. But it's interesting to me that the Eagles are bringing back Nick Sirianni. Now, I should mention that he has two years left on his contract, mm -hmm. oh, no. $7 million a year. No, it's no, not no. a lame duck situation. <laughs> no, he has two years left on his contract. Yeah. This is a prove-it year for Nick Sirianni. <laughs> when you are this close to being fired, and people like us are saying every day, is he going to be fired, is he going to be fired, is he going to be fired, and then you're not, that means that you are auditioning for your job next year. And I think one thing that's interesting about this whole scenario is one of the main things that plagued the Eagles this year at the end of the year was replacing the last two coordinators they lost from last year, which is sure. Gannon and Steichen. Mm -hmm. And now we're in a similar situation where they're like, all you have to do, Nick, what you failed at last year, replacing the coordinators, that's your job right now this year. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's reports that they may go out and get the office of coordinator from the Colts. His name is Jim Bob Cooter, which is a hell of a name in yes. itself. Yes, he's been around uh, a long time. Uh, he's been Bob uh, Cooter. Uh, right, but overall, man, you can't have Jalen Hurts play the way he played this year. There's got to be somebody to unlock him and get him back on par because that's the key to the success. Well, let me just tell you right now, what's today's date? The set, uh, January, 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 January. What is it, March 3rd? Whatever the day is, January something. Oh, it's my son's birthday. That's right. January 23rd. Damn it, Dad! Oh, Which one? Hey, Damn it! Happy birthday. What's your name? Um, <laughs> no, I think it's Anthony. I think we named it hey. Anthony. Um, I, I, I think I, we I, named I, it Anthony. I'm pretty sure about that. I'm going to tell you right now who the two new coordinators are going to be in Philadelphia. All right? The new offensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles is going to be Frank Reich. Really? And the new defensive coordinator of the Philadelphia Eagles is going to be Wink Martindale. Oh, Those are the two guys mm. that the Eagles are so going to bring it? in. I'm calling it. Okay. I'm shooting my shot. Okay. okay. I'm calling it. I'm going to write That's that down. right. Uh, so write it down. January 23rd. Once again, I'll be right, and no one will give me any credit for it. Uh, <laughs> Can all right. I not write it down? Well, that's why I'm here. I have myself on the back. Coming up, the big reveal. Jared Goff finally makes it to the that's main not stage. A okay, say his name. Fine. Oh, I shouldn't say that. Yeah. Oh, uh, an NFL quarterback. Who's <laughs> an unnamed, an unnamed NFL quarterback. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 An yeah. Yeah. unnamed yeah. NFL yeah. quarterback who deserves to be mentioned alongside Lamar Jackson, Brock Purdy, and Patrick Mahomes. We will reveal who that quarterback He's is. He's than Brock Purdy. I don't make the things. <laughs> Coming up next. That is awfully short. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Carton Show. Before we get to first in football, as you know, if you've watched the show, throughout the season, we are usually have a backdrop of all the great quarterbacks yeah. in the league. And then as we go through it, you know, some guys come, some guys go. So we've got Patty Mahomes. Patty! Patrick. We've got Brock Purdy. Yeah, we've machine. got Lamar Jackson. Right. It is about time that a young, impressionable, somewhat journeyman type quarterback who is a game away from his second Super Bowl appearance, yeah. who could this joins us I know, here like we, we, on the big stage. Any guesses as to what the uh, who the quarterback is? Uh, I mean, I would say Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Uh, short. Nathan Nathan Ladies Peterman. and gentlemen, I present to you for the first time ever on this show never a guy who's guy very deserving be. of being with all these great quarterbacks, the quarterback of the Detroit Lions, Mr. Jared uh, Goff. Hey! 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 Wait. I'm, I didn't I'm see that sorry. Coming. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> That's I'm, not Jared. Now, this is not Jared Goff. No, it is not. No. Hey. But, Greg, great idea. I will say that. <laughs> I, I, give you, I give you credit <laughs> for this, buddy. I give you credit for this. Willie, stop. Sorry. <laughs> I know. Actually... Actually, what? hang on one second. Oh, man. Hang on one second. Oh, we got more? Hang on one hey! second. Oh, there, there we go. go. There you go. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go, Jerry. Right. Sorry, Christian Harper. All right. You have to stay over here in the corner for a second. You, t you turn but around. But don't worry. Daddy will be home soon. <laughs> 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 Woo. Jared. <laughs> so, Jared Goff takes his rightful place amongst job, the really good quarterbacks yeah. in the NFL. There's only four of them left. Let's Jared go. Goff. Finally made it. He finally did okay. it. Okay. Um, can you guys do me a favor? My car's out front. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just have a, uh, if you just want Christian. You, you know what? Why don't you just hang here and watch the show? <laughs> just uh, do that. Just watch the show for a little bit. All right. From <laughs> Again, great, great idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No <laughs> Jacoby's a guy. First of football, go ahead. First of football, we start with Patrick Mahomes. He was asked about the fact that he won his first playoff road game, and he kind of poo pooed the whole concept. Here's what Mahomes had to say. I'll say that we played in the Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. We lost that one. I didn't like to bring that one up, but I mean, it's it's we've played basically road road playoff games before. Um, but uh, I mean, we just come in with the same mindset. If we're going to come together, put our best foot forward, and see if we can come out with a win, and that takes uh, the mentality throughout the week. It takes every single play executing, um, and we did a great job of that today, and we we're able to score enough to win. Okay. Okay. Regardless of technicalities, are the Ravens on the road for the Chiefs the toughest test of their season? Oh, it's not even close, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing. We, we said it throughout the year with the Dolphins and the Cowboys, more so than we would even said it about Kansas City this year. You, know, you don't blame a team for their schedule. It is yep. what it is. It's not their fault that they may have had an easier schedule than they have had in the past or that other teams have had. Uh, it just happens from time to time. Uh, that being said, if you do go back and take a look at Kansas City this year, and this is not a knock. I want to be clear. I'm not taking a shot at Kansas City because they don't pick their schedule the Baltimore Ravens represent something they have not seen all year. And that's a team of grade-A talent on both sides of the ball who are actually healthy as well. You know, you know we, we make a big deal about Kansas City going into Buffalo. And I understand it, and I give them their flowers for winning a game in Orchard Park. You know, but they barely beat a team that was missing eight starters. You know, and while it's great, again, not their fault yep. that Buffalo's banged up with the Josh Allen, you know, makes a couple bad decisions late. You give them credit for maybe forcing him into bad decisions. But the reality is this, the Baltimore Ravens, and it's not close, <clears throat> are the best team on both sides of the ball yes. that the Kansas City Chiefs have seen the entire year. And if you want to look at even more recent history, like I said, you just beat a Bills team missing eight starters. That means something. You played a Dolphin team that was missing seven starters and playing in weather that they're not used to. And it was obscene, obviously, uh, the weather. So I'm not saying Kansas City can't go into Baltimore and win because number 15 special. And if there is a guy that can lead a team to a win on the road against the best team in football, it's him. 
but don't get it twisted. This Ravens team is different. Yeah, they're different because they match up well, and they also have range. What's not talked about, as much as we love Patrick McQueen and we love uh, Raekwon Swift, listen, these guys aren't just downhill linebackers. They can cover, especially when you get backed up by Kyle Hamilton. So this is a difference overall. Whatever Patrick Mahomes thinks he can do, they can match pound for pound. So yeah. they've never seen that on that side of the ball for the Chiefs. Overall, man, we talked about a time, and Greg made a great point a couple weeks ago. This brand travels well, right? They, they, Meeting the Ravens. The Ravens, yeah. right? Even though they're going to be home, they're a physical team. They're going to try to punch them in the mouth, and they do it early and often. So it's going to be a big test for the Chiefs. Yeah, one of the things that you're talking about, for me, I look at this matchup and I see personnel. And what typically the Kansas City Chiefs can do is they can – to have the better matchups with Travis Kelsey, with Rasheed Rice, mm-hmm. obviously in the run game. And you look at this game for the first time in the postseason yeah. and really all season long, you look at the Kansas City Chiefs and the one difference maker, which has always been the difference maker, is that guy right That's there. Right. Yeah. Everyone else is pretty much, even Travis Kelsey, when you look at these lines, obviously he's going to impact the game and he's going to be a focal point of the Ravens. But they don't, you don't strike fear or you don't feel the sense that the Ravens are going to have an issue with matching up against the Chiefs because of that depth, because of the personnel that they, are, that they have on that roster. So for me, I, I lean towards the Ravens. You have to. They're the better team. I mean, yeah. and, and again, If you take any of the top quarterbacks not named Mahomes, this game isn't even in doubt. It's a it's an easy Ravens win. He gets you know the benefit of the doubt because he's so damn good and wins every playoff game more or less that he's ever played. And so it's respect. It's the highest level of respect any guy has ever gotten in the history of the league. You also have to look at this. You know when you watch that game against the Buffalo Bills, if I'm the Baltimore Ravens and I by the way kind of secretly have the best rushing offense in all football that nobody likes to talk about, and I saw Cook get off, and I saw, obviously, when he wanted to, Josh Allen, with design run plays or pocket breaking down took off for major gains, right? If I'm the Ravens offense, I mean, you know, that's finger looking good, (laughs) because I'm going to have my way with your defense if your run defense is as bad as it was for the majority of the game. Maybe not that last drive, Mm -hmm. but the majority of the game. If I'm Baltimore, you know, come get some. Yeah, you you got to believe that. When you look at the Baltimore Ravens and what they provide, like they, they can go anywhere. Patrick McQueen said it. We can play anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter where we play. But they happen to be playing on their turf, on their terms, and they dictate how they play. This is why this team is going to be and, tough. And this is what's scary about the Ravens. Mark Andrews may play this game. Yeah. Like, that's the, that's what they don't want. But likely he's been so damn good. Yeah, you right. don't, you don't take him off. out of the line. What you got there, Jacob? Moving on to second in football, we got some weird news. What's that? Take a look at this little story from the Niners. Oh. Coach Shanahan sat down with Brady. Purdy and told him it was fine. And he said, you know what? We might bring in Tom Brady this offseason uh-huh. and make you the backup. Yeah. Uh-huh. 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 And then Purdy responded. Uh-huh. Purdy said, basically, uh, I, I thought that I was good enough to not be the backup here because we would have gone to Super Bowl with me. But that is fine. What do you make of the fact that Kyle Shanahan himself yeah. was trying to replace Brock Purdy just months ago? Well, it's funny. When I first reported it a year ago, and you guys all poo-pooed me, you weren't here yet, but I was poo-pooed on my very own show. Uh, it's laughable that this is now a news story when I told you guys this was happening a year ago. The reality is this. Tom Brady was never coming out of retirement. Uh, he even said so himself, made yeah. fun of the fact that he wanted to, but... My buddies gave me a retirement party. He's not coming out of retirement moving forward either. But if you're Brock Purdy, you were coming off a major elbow surgery, and there was no guarantee, obviously, that you're going to be ready to play Mm -hmm. at the start of the season. Now, good for you, you were. But if you're Brock Purdy and you've played in nine games in your entire life and they have a chance to get Tom Brady, who, by the way, the year before led the league in completions and yards, what are you going to say about it? Nothing. You're going to go like this. Nice to meet you, Mr. Brady. I'm a big fan. Could you sign your jersey for me after the game? It's also I told you guys last year in the spring that San Francisco made a run at Aaron Rodgers because they weren't sure if Brock Purdy was going to be able to come back physically and he had only played nine games. So why not let him sit on the sideline behind an all-time great and then become the official starting quarterback? So it all lines up with what I told you guys a year ago, and I like Brock Purdy's answer. 
I thought I did a pretty good job. Yeah, it's like uh, undefeated. Like, <laughs> like, I, I thought I, I was lost okay. The game. But he also uh, acknowledged it was the GOAT, right? But it I'll tell you what else it shows you. It goal. shows you on the Shanahan side a little level of desperation. It shows you the acknowledgement. Hey, we're now in what is it? Fourth championship game in the last five years yep. in the NFC, but no rings to yep. show for it. That my window might be closing oh. because I'm the oh. coach that can get close but not win it. And that becomes a resume filler as well. Well, yeah, the reality is, is there's only so long you can keep a, a, a team, team like, like this that. together. Yeah. Right. Uh, when you talk about the amount yeah. of pieces they have on offense and defense, like you only got a timetable of that where which you got to strike gold. And they've had opportunity and they've fallen short. He is very mindful of that. And then you talk about the injury. I think a lot of us forget about the injury to Brock Purdy and in going into this, coming into right. this There's season. No guarantee it was, was a real issue. He Kyle did. Shanahan has a wandering eye when it comes to quarterbacks. The, you yeah. know what I mean? He's just constantly looking yeah. for an upgrade yeah. at all times. It's like Jimmy G. It's like, oh, no, got draft trade Lance. Oh, Brock Purdy, let's have them compete. Remember? When, do you remember if he said if they won the NFC Championship last year, they would have brought in – Philip Rivers. Oh, yeah. And then there's Aaron Rodgers. And now it's Tom Brady. It just seems like he's constantly trying to upgrade. Yeah, you can't blame him for being horny for Brady, right? <laughs> the, guy grew up, the, the guy grew up a big Niners fan. He was actually, he said himself in 1981, he was at the Dwight Clark game. Like, go. How can you not? I am every day. Right. Yeah. Every, yeah, every day I'm every horny day. for Tom Brady. It's kind of like yeah. you with Christian Harper. Yeah, right. like I'm hoping Tom Brady doesn't do uh, uh, the uh, analyst job with Kevin Burkhardt and said wants to sit next to me. No, right. no, no, oh, we got a point at Willie's spot. I guess I'll pull up Brock and say, I guess I'll accept it. By the way, yeah. I He's got the time to place all of you. <laughs> He's enough man for me. I don't need the three years. Moving on to third and football. Has nothing to do with us losing our jobs. Um, <laughs> although they lost to the Niners last week, Matt LaFleur and the Packers had a successful season. LaFleur, talk about how the expectations would change heading into next season. Just understand. The, the expectations going into this season are not going to be the same expectations going into next season. That's right. And they've earned that. But mm. with that, uh, you better put in the work because nothing's guaranteed, like I talked about. And I mean, we've it, it's hard to argue with that, right? But we've seen yeah. teams, you know, have good seasons, even young, and, and sort of turn things around. New York Giants are a prime example of that. And we'll have months to discuss this, but sort of like, are they? Do are expectations for them to be sort of like a top four team in the NFC no, next year? No, not stupid. No, no, and no. They were a nine and eight team who had to barely beat the Chicago Bears just to get into the playoffs. And yes, pulled off the greatest upset of this year's playoffs by yeah. dominating the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas and playing their asses off. To be fair, against San Francisco and outside of a bad decision late in the game, you're not closing out the San Francisco 49ers and having another rematch with the Detroit Lions in the NFC Championship game. But we got to slow our roll. Like, Jordan Love is still somewhat unproven. Right now, you've got to do it for me again. Uh, you have to have a better than 9-8 and eight season. You are not the best team in your own division because the Detroit Lions are. Yep. And that's not up for debate. The Chicago Bears are only two games behind you this past year. They're going to get better. God knows what Minnesota does at quarterback. So they're kind of a big question mark for me in that division. But what LaFleur said that's right. And I saw it with my own two eyes here a year ago when the New York Giants surprised everybody, got into the playoffs, won a road playoff game, and then faltered against Philly. Those parallels are the same because now the expectation is, oh, hold on a second, 9-8, and eight, made the postseason, nope. won a road playoff game. Now next year, anything less than that is unacceptable, meaning now – you're going to learn a lot about Jordan Love going into the final year of his contract at $10.5 bucks to see, is he really a franchise quarterback? But I also think this, and it's a fair question, and it's a topic for sure. I find it a little disrespectful, if I may. To who? A little disrespectful. A little bit. A little bit. To the Detroit Lions. Because why are we talking about the Green Bay Packers when the Detroit Lions are in the NFC Championship game? Why? Tell me why. Because Jordan Love is, the, is going to be Jared Goff's biggest competition in that division. And the expectation should be for the Green Bay Packers to win that division next year. Well, and what also, if I told you that Jared Goff's not long for Detroit? What if I told you that? Not long? Jared Goff has a single year left on his contract. He ain't going nowhere. A single year. Where is he going? And if you don't think there's going to be suitors for Jared Goff 
after he gets waxed in the NFC Championship game against the Niners? You are wrong. When's the last time the Detroit Lions had a quarterback like that? He's okay. not leaving the building. Yeah, he's not oh, food for yeah. thought. I would say the previous yeah. quarterback. Yeah, for me, when I look at the Packers, oh, like <laughs> what Matt LaFleur is talking about is not just internally, it's externally too. Like their fan base is going to expect – for this team right, to take step. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we are going to look at it, regardless of how they finished the season and what they ended up looking like against the Niners, we're going to expect for this team to be in contention to win that division based on what we've seen previously. And the reality of it is, you talk about the Giants, which is a, a very comparable uh, uh, suitor, yeah, yeah. but look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, a team last year, last year who had no expectations. They make the playoffs. They win a playoff game. They lose in the divisional round against the Kansas City Chiefs. And then this year, we had expectations of, oh, this team could possibly be the best team in the conference, could make the AFC championship sure. game. And then Trevor Lawrence kind of takes a step back, and that team is nowhere close to what we expected them to be. That's what they have to fight against because they will be – they will be – not a team that's revered as uh, no one's paying attention to them. Right. Everyone will know who you are now if you're that's Jordan right. Love. And, and the schedule Bay. gets harder. Now expectations yeah. rise. And, you know, you learn exactly what that team is. But, look, it's an interesting conversation considering the unexpected success and that playoff win. You have the Dallas Cowboys blow them out. We're not talking about the oh, Green no. Bay nope. Packers in the manner we are now. So they do deserve credit for that. Much more coming your way. Uh, Debo Samuel defending his starting quarterback. And this one more time. Hey! That is not Jared Goff. You sure? <laughs> that is his fiance, and she's now a big part I've of I've never the show. seen Jared Goff in the Plus, beginning. yeah, but right after this. <laughs> hey, Christian. All right, welcome back to the Card Show. Getting ready for the MC Championship game with the hottest quarterback in the game. That's not true. My man, <laughs> <laughs> my guy. Brock Purdy. It's weird how Brock Purdy uh, still takes uh, shots from left and right and, uh, you know, gut punches. Uh, again, after an average at best performance against the Green Bay Packers, you know, the, the critics are out there to get him. But one of the people supporting him is the injured Debo Samuel. And Debo Samuel, I think we have a full screen here. There you go. Never seen so much hate for a quarterback that can lead the league or has led the league get in over. every category. Uh, Y'all folks be bugging. Uh, that, that tape for real, for real. don't tell no lies. Look, I've been on this, you know, from day one. And everyone talks about Brock Purdy and the manner they talk about him because of where he was drafted. Yes. If Brock Purdy was a first-round draft pick, we would talk about San Francisco, got it right, and he's lived up, maybe even exceeded expectations. But because he was Mr. Irrelevant, because he's only making you know $800,000, because he's got all the talent around him, everyone's trying to find a way to criticize the guy. But we don't do that. For any of the other quarterbacks. So here's my final defense of my main man, the machine, the Brock machine. Purdy. He's been the starting quarterback of San Francisco for, let's agree, a year and a half. Is that uh, about a fair, yes, you know, uh, as far as games played? All he did in his first year was go to an NFC championship game and on the very first drive gets knocked out with the elbow injury. All he's done in his second year and a full year of being the starting quarterback for San Francisco is go, oh, that's right, to another NFC Championship game. And yet, every week, it's about it's a system thing. It's a town around him thing. But we don't use the same kind of, you know, judgment bar when it comes to Mahomes, who's got the best defense he's ever had, who's got an all-pro tight end, who had Tyree Kill for a good portion of his run. We don't criticize Lamar Jackson that he's got Mark Andrews and Odell and the best rookie wide receiver in football and a top five defense. But with Brock Purdy, for some reason, the national media has to find a way to criticize him, and I can't figure out why. Well, first of all, you compare him to, to MVPs, yeah, right? What are you doing? Like, that, what are you doing? You're talking about Patrick Mahomes huh? and Lamar Jackson. These that's guys, right. These that's guys right. are the best of the best. And he's right in the same conversation. No, with he is. Guys. No, he's not. You know that. Like, what are you doing? Next. Go ahead. <laughs> the the like, reality of it is, is yeah. he a good quarterback? He's yes. a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. That doesn't a, have a Super Bowl or MVP. Is he a difference maker? No, he is not. I'm going to tell you why, why this is out there. Go. Because prior to Brock Purdy, who was their quarterback? 
Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo. what did he do? The he, same thing. He lit it up. Yeah. And now what is he doing? Sitting on the bench and not even doing that right now. He's watching the games like us. So, yeah. for, for me, when you look at a guy like Jared Goff, he's kind of in that same category. Until he wins, until he proves that you, you've won because of him, then that's going to be the narrative. I, I don't believe it has anything to do with where he was drafted, him being ir- Mr. Yeah. Irrelevant, all those things. It, what it has to do with, with what we've seen prior to him coming into that position. We've seen the same things with this 49ers team with different quarterbacks. We've seen it with Jimmy Garoppolo when everybody was talking about, oh, all he does is win. Yep. Yeah, but did, was he a difference maker? Absolutely not. And if you were a 49er fan, and if you are a 49er fan, yeah. you know that. You've lived it. And so for me, if he does not win, you have to go and try to find a difference maker at that position. Oh. A guy maybe like Who? Justin Fields if the Chicago Oh, oh like it. Now we're talking. That's, uh, I, I good mean, morning, everybody. Hey. Listen, Look, they might go to the Super Bowl. I know you Justin that Fields over Brock here. Purdy right now. That's let me. Can help me out here, please. Just, yeah, that's that's tough. Thank you. Hey. That's a tough. Hey, okay. Let me just say this. <laughs> Justin I mentioned, Fields. I mentioned earlier. Let's just, not discuss whether it's a good move. We I discussed earlier that Kyle Shannon has a wandering eye. He does. The quarterback. If you would have told me Kirk Cousins, I'm like, oh, he went okay. to the Super Bowl with Jimmy Justin G, and then decided maybe he's not the guy. I could see him go, getting beaten by the Lions. It took and Justin Fields the back the half of the season for us to even consider him a competent quarterback. Like, hey, I, look, let's be Justin Fields. This was the first drugs, year he actually had skill guys around him and support up front and protection. Yeah. And then we want him to be we wanted him to be what uh Joe Burrow was right away, what Justin Herbert was right away when they had competency around him. This was the first year we saw Justin Fields with some competent skill guys around him and look what he did. I think you're looking at Brock Purdy to your point, Craig. That just brought him back to the NFC Championship. Even though the pieces he does have, it still took him. And what I love about Brock Purdy, he recovers. After bad games, he plays extremely well. And I and Craig said this yesterday. I think he's gonna be play he's gonna play a lot better against Detroit. There's no doubt about it. I think he's gonna be money good. This was shocking. I didn't think he was gonna be as bad as he looked throughout the game. The last drive, he stood on his head and actually put on the performance. I am uh... But Justin Fields was uh so, so, so. I'm let, speechless let, right now. You, you, which I'm you should be. First yeah, which ever. you should be. I am. Be, you should be because, because if, you just said Justin Fields. Yeah. Like, what? Is he, is Justin Fields a difference maker? No. He's not. You don't believe that. No, I do believe that. No, I'm, Justin Fields is a great running back playing quarterback. Tim Hardaway said he happens to be right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and look, maybe Justin Fields one day has a competent year or even a winning year. We'll wait for it since it hasn't happened just yet. And maybe the Chicago Bears believe he is the answer. Yeah. Probably not. They probably draft Caleb Williams and trade Justin Fields, which will prove my point that he's not a franchise okay. quarterback. Let me, but again, why do we do this with Brock Purdy, but you guys don't do it I, with anybody else? Because well, he talking about their resumes. Me. He doesn't have the resume these guys All the have. guy it's, does is win. Yes, yeah, so did so 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 Jimmy Garoppolo. But we've seen Kyle Shanahan and this offense take mediocre quarterbacks and make them successful and go to Super Bowls. The guy, it's happened before. The That's guy, why we do it with him in particular. The guy – no, but it's not fair. Because we don't give, you know, the guys around Lamar Jackson credit. We don't give the great talent around Patrick Mahomes credit. Yeah, but, you, but when it comes to Brock Purdy, oh, it can't possibly be Brock. You Paul, can't compare the people around yeah. the, yeah. The, the people around those two quarterbacks. If you're going to compare them, keep going yeah. down the line. Go to Jared Goff. Do we do that with him? Jared Goff's viewed as a journeyman quarterback. He's having a good year. And where yeah, was right? he drafted? He's uh, first, first overall. Exactly. Do we hold that against him? Yes. You're saying that we hold the fact that he was irrelevant, yes, Mr. Yes. Irrelevant. So now he's drafted first overall. He's the same thing. Yeah, it's we a look lack at of them in the same. We, you guys don't like Brock Purdy. I don't know it's why. It's not that. I don't the, want to start guessing why. So that's the issue. We that I, think, I think we be, we're able to see the full picture. Hold that's, on. Here's the full is. picture. The guy got the starting job and did not lose a single game. The only game the Niners lost. Uh, that he started was the game he came out after five plays against the Eagles. This year, he's the starting quarterback 
of the number one seed in the NFC. Right. And he's most likely going to take his team to a Super Bowl since they are a touchdown favorite at home against the Detroit Lions. I'm be honest with you. And we're going to go into the Super Bowl, and you guys are going to go, they'd be better with I'm Justin I'm going to be Fields. honest with you. I'm just saying. If I were a quarterback, crazy dog. if I were playing quarterback <laughs> in the National Football League, yes, I would want to be with the 49ers. Because Me too. The, I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you the reason why. Because everyone in that locker room is going to make you feel like you are the most valuable quarterback in the National Football League. We heard them talk the same exact way about Jimmy Garoppolo. Do you think they're crying about not having Jimmy Garoppolo? I know they're not. Exactly. So do you think they would be crying if Brock Purdy was no longer in that yes, locker room? Yes, I do. No, they would Because wouldn't. the Look, guy's a great quarterback. Kyle Shanahan. He's not good. They moved up in the draft to Greg acquire Trey yeah. Lance. Why? Because they thought he was going to be a difference maker, not only with throwing the ball, but primarily with what they was going to potentially be able to do with his legs. That's why I look at that yeah. and I say, oh, you have a guy who's actually doing that and who is on the cusp of becoming a star in this league if he's around and in the right system and yeah. has the right support uh, in Justin Fields. I would also tell you that in a year and a half, Brock Purdy has more playoff wins than Lamar Jackson. Oh, my gosh. What's That's up? Oh That's my fine. Gosh. I mean, they, so why would they try so to replace him with two? Season? Why did they try to replace him with two other quarterbacks this offseason? They didn't. And they tried, they, Tom Brady. Because he was injured. There was no guarantee he was going to be ready to play football on Labor Day. There was no guarantee his elbow was going to be good. So they talked about the greatest of all time on a one-year deal and maybe Aaron Rodgers on a two-year deal right. while he was recuperating from a busted-up elbow. It wasn't because he was healthy. And he's proven again that he's as good as any quarterback in the league. Okay. Period. Stop. He proved that? Like, yes, he, he did. He proved that? Like like, I respect Debo a lot. And I, I, I respect his stance and him supporting his quarterback. <laughs> but if, if, I, if you talked to Debo Samuel and you sat him down and interviewed him and said, hey, would you rather have Patrick Mahomes over Brock Purdy? What do you think he would say? Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback so in football. So stop comparing Brock Purdy to him. He's in the pool. No, he just said that he proved He's he was the, the best quarterback. All right, I told you Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. Brock Purdy's 1A. He was an MVP candidate. So you guys drink haterade, and I'm Lamar? disgusted by it. Where's Christian Harper? Okay. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> yeah, talk to my girl over here. Good morning. Yeah. Welcome back to the Cubs show. We have your early morning headlines, and we have some very interesting news that could affect the NFC Ooh. Championship game. What's that? Kyle Shanahan says there is a chance that Debo will be playing in the title game. Yes. Said it's about 50-50. I like that. Do uh, the Niners need Debo to beat the Lions? No, they don't. But obviously having Debo Samuel makes it easier yep. because he's a, a generational talent. I can beat you in so many different ways. And they're obviously just a better team when you have that level of talent. As you, know, you take the best wide receiver of any team in football, they're not as good. Put them back on the team. They're obviously better. I think they beat Detroit regardless of Debo Samuel playing. But obviously, having him on the field, even as a decoy, I want him on the field because Detroit's got to take him seriously because he can line up in three or four different positions and can beat you both running the ball and obviously as a great wide receiver. But I think they're fine. You know, with, with Brandon Ayuk, who's an underappreciated wide receiver, in my opinion. McCaffrey, Kittle, Jennings, who's yeah. had a couple of big catches in the last couple of weeks for them as well. And, of course, here's the reality. When you've got a top three quarterback in the NFL, you win games no matter who your wide receivers are. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Greg Jennings, what's up? <laughs> I'm not going to address the last part. Thank you, because we I'm keep moving the goalposts on, on my guy, I'm Brock Purdy. On Debo. In yes, any event, Debo, Debo needs to play. Yeah. But they can win without him. And I'll tell you why, in my opinion, yeah. he needs to play. Because you, you talked about it when yeah. we, in, in, in headlines about him being instant offense. What that instant offense looks like is him getting the ball right away. Taking pressure off Brock Purdy where he doesn't have to drop back and throw the ball 39 times like he's done, sure. like he did last week, which is the most he's ever thrown the ball in his career, which is where he starts to struggle. When you start to turn this offense into a drop back pass style of offense versus you talk about the instant offense, turn around, jet sweep, hand it off to Debo, McCaffrey, quick screen to Debo, quick screen to McCaffrey, get the ball in these playmakers' hands and then play action fake to sure. obviously Kittle and, and all the other guys. That's what this offense is supposed to look like. Without him, 
it starts to change. The one thing I will say that they do have an advantage of is if when you go into a game and the game plan is 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 being had without a player, now you can kind of tailor it to fit what you're That's going fair. to As have. As opposed to a guy comes out in the first quarter. Correct. Now, that I will say this, and not, not to continue the Purdy thing, but, you know, the one drive they had to have to advance in he the playoffs great. and beat Green Bay, where we all agree, yep. whether you, whatever you feel about him or not, that Brock Purdy was on point no doubt. on that final drive, no Debo Samuel, yep, on no the doubt. drive to save their season. So, if I am San Francisco, I know the rhetoric is out there that prior to the game against Green Bay, they had not won a game without Debo Samuel playing from start to finish. They were 0-4. Uh, obviously, that changed when they beat Green Bay because uh, he didn't finish that game, and they won that game. That being said, I can build off that. And for all the rhetoric and narrative out there, oh, we can't win without Debo, I would just show film of that last drive. Debo went on the field, and they had no problem going down the field and scoring the game when he if, touched If out. a player is 50-50 and it's an NFC Championship game, I expect the player to play. As do I. However, one of the things that makes Debo so special is his physicality. Yes. Like, I, I love the Bills. I like Stephon Diggs. Yeah. You know what he does? He gets down. He gets down. He's not trying to take hits. He's not trying to run through tackles. And, Greg, you're a wide receiver. What Debo does is he challenges DBs. He, he runs through tackles. And if you have a shoulder issue, I think that aspect of his game might not be as strong. The good news is that they did say he didn't re-break it. It no. was a hairline fracture back in October. And that's the hit right there. It's a direct hit to the shoulder that obviously he broke in October. Uh, it's not broken. And my gut is what Jacoby just said. Look, you guys, we play on your manhood. When it comes to you know, football, and we challenge you, what kind of man are you? Uh, which is why I, it's a bad reference, but I go back 15 years when uh, Jake Cutler took himself out of a playoff game right. because he couldn't play, right. and everyone accused him of not being a man. Yep. Yo, be a man's man. Yep. Right. The guy couldn't walk. Totally right. ACL. Right. right. And totally. yet the, the, the narrative on Jake Cutler was he's not a dude. He's not a guy's yeah, guy. A Can't quitter. trust him in a big spot. He's a quitter. He's soft, all those you know, derogatory terms. And we play that against you guys in the media. What kind of man are you? My gut is what Jacoby's saying is right. When you are listed at 50-50 and we've ruled out a fracture, hairline fracture, or any other kind of injury, Debo Samuel's going to be on the field. Now, how much does he He's play? Be how effective is he? What do you run we for? We don't know. You're going to run him in the goal but, line? You see a couple of these plays? These are goal but line I runs. Use, but even with that, I want him on the field because Detroit has to guard him. Mm -hmm. And he might be a decoy at some point, and maybe that doesn't work for four quarters. But if I put Debo Samuel on the field, look, his shoulder may be hurt. Don't mean he can't go in motion. Right. Doesn't mean you can't move him around a lot. And I've now got to account for him. So that alone is why I think he dresses. Well, you want him on the field because the Detroit pass rush is going to be key to beating the 49ers, right? And if you got to get the ball out in your hands fast, you want Debo saying you yeah. in the slot or in the backfield game with your ball. But overall, we got a graphic to show you. Let's do it. Without, the graphic. Without Debo, in the, without Debo in the lineup, this is what they look like. Look at points uh, per game. They dropped dramatically, right? With him at 13.3. Without him, 18.7. You talk about Debo, and if I say it time after time, when he's in the game, He's a difference maker, right? And so, overall, man, you don't need him just With because of what the threat he has because he's a net, he's a matchup nightmare. Yeah, when you if we keep that up there, you go down to pass touchdowns to interceptions, like 29-7 with Debo, and obviously a short sample size, four, four touchdowns to five interceptions. Why that is is because you become more of a drop-back team. Yep. That is not the strength of this 49ers team. It's not a knock on Brock Purdy. It is just uh, it's who they are offensively becomes exposed or it gets exposed when you lose a talent like McCaffrey, what they mean to that instant offense sure. that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also why I put him out there. Right, even yeah. if it's a decoy, yeah. I want him on the field because Detroit knows we got to account for that guy. And look, I'm all about numbers. I hate analytics, but Why? numbers numbers mean something. Numbers matter. I was a math major in college, so I, I appreciate you know numbers and all that stuff. That being said, <laughs> three of those five interceptions happened in one game against the Cleveland Browns. So you know we can manufacture numbers to fulfill anybody's yeah. argument, mine included. But those numbers do not tell the entire story. Those numbers make it look like you have an incompetent offense without Debo Samuel. When the reality is that if I take the Cleveland game out of that, all of a sudden those numbers don't look as bad. Yeah, but the goal is to get to a championship, right? And here we are in the NFC Championship. You're gonna need all guns firing, and you yep. got him in the lineup. He's hell for anybody in the slot. No doubt. And he, by the way, I'd be shocked if he's not dressed. 
I'm not saying he's going to have 10 catches. I expect him to play. Yeah, yeah he's going to play. He's going to be on the field. And I will say, with the 49ers, this is always a, a thing. Like, guys getting injured at the worst times in their season. Yeah. We saw it with Brock Purdy last year. Yeah. We've seen it in previous years where they've mm-hmm. suffered injuries at the wrong time of the season, and it kind of derailed what they wanted to get done. So, this is huge. And I think he plays, and to your point, yeah. even him being on the field, it poses a threat to the Detroit Lions. Two players we know will be on the field in the AFC Championship game are Lamar Jackson yes. we do. and Patrick Mahomes. Hunter, we do. Hunter. Considered to be the best and second best quarterback in the league, whatever order you want to put him in. And this is the first time they've ever Matt matched up in the playoffs. Right now. Right, right now. now. We'll start with right you. Now. Right now. Right now. Who would you rather have starting a playoff game? Get it right, Craig. Uh, Get it right. It's not fair because it's an easy answer. No. And the answer is Patrick Mahomes. Oh, uh, buddy. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the NFL, period, stop. Everybody's chasing Patrick Mahomes. Lamar's pretty damn good. To me, you want to say he's 1A? I can accept that, but he's not number one. And he's having a great year. He'll be the MVP. He'll get his second trophy. But this guy right here, when it's all said and done, could very well be second only to Tom Brady in the annals of the NFL. Lamar Jackson has to do what a lot of quarterbacks have done that he hasn't done yet, and that's postseason success. He got a big monkey off his back last week by getting a win because what was the narrative? I don't know if you can trust Lamar Jackson, and it's been three weeks since they played, and he's only got one playoff win and three losses and blah, 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 blah. So he got the win out of the way. Now you have a legacy game. Now is he going to be the guy, kind of like Joe Burrow was a couple years ago, who's able to go head-to-head against the greatest of his generation and beat him? Because that's what Joe Burrow did. Mm -hmm. If Lamar Jackson can do that, we will look at Lamar Jackson in a much different light, much more positively than a lot of people do. Yeah, this is this. Qu- I'm with you. This is not a fair question because if you're in your right mind, yeah. you're going to say Patrick Mahomes. Like, yeah. and this this is not a knock on Lamar Jackson. It's no, just it's not. the facts are the facts. The quarterbacks that we've watched go up against Patrick Mahomes have not had success in beating him. With Josh Allen's great quarterback, but when he plays that guy. And he's on, Patrick Mahomes is on the other sideline. You in the back of your mind, if you're a fan, player alike, yeah. you feel like now, man. Yeah. Can I give you guys what I side. think is a better question, right? Because Lamar versus uh, Patrick Mahomes kind of gets a little boring. Like, is it LeBron or is it Kobe, right? That kind of thing. Because they're both second to MJ. All right, but here here's the question: Who's third? Who's third? Yeah. What if we mean? agree right now in the moment. Mahomes is one, Lamar's two. If you want to flip that, that's on you. I'm just asking a very quick question just to satisfy my own brain. Those two guys out of the picture, they're one and two. No one's going to dispute that. Right now. Right who's now. third? Josh Allen or Dak Prescott? Uh, what? Josh Allen you or Dak Prescott? Out of the four? You got no, out of the four. No, no, no. Out of the four. I'm just saying in the NFL. I'm taking right Josh now. Allen. Josh Allen. You go to Josh Allen. I'm going to Joe Burrow. Joe guys, Burrow. You guys yeah. know where I'm going. I'm going down to Houston. Come on, CJ. Oh, please. Let's That's go, aggressive. CJ. I tell you That's what. That's aggressive. Later in the week, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Later in the week, we'll do the wheel of quarterbacks, oh. and we can rank three to ten. Fair enough? Because if I remember correctly, it was only a couple months ago that someone sitting up here said that Daniel Jones was a top ten quarterback. <laughs> Who? Who? What? Uh, da- Daniel Jones? Who? Who? James Jones? Is there an Allen here now? I only, yeah. I only go back a week or so. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, we can't, we don't, I don't go hey, back. What else now. you got, Jacobs? <laughs> Moving on to our third headline, and it is not just the third headline, the third best quarterback in the NFL. Josh Allen was asked if some changes need to be made in Buffalo for them to be successful. And he didn't love the question, but he answered it. Here he is. No, not at all. Why not? Um, you know, I believe in the – in. What we've got going on here and the people that are in charge, I believe in myself, um, and that'll never change. Okay. Two changes need to be made in Buffalo. I was dancing in Willis Ring Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do, I, I do really. think changes yeah. need to be made in Buffalo. Uh, I do. And I think they're going to lose Gabe Davis, so they're going to need another wide receiver. I know Diggs is untradeable because of his contract, but I guarantee you an offseason of a lot of lip 
uh, from Diggs and or his brother. Uh, it's possible towards the situation in Buffalo. I think the problem with the Bills right now is the fact that they're going into the worst offseason financially yeah. they've ever had. They're in absolute cap hell. They're already $40 million over the cap uh, Look at those up. three contracts. That's You've got, insane. I mean, Von Miller's a complete waste of space. Uh, he, get, he got paid $3 million per tackle. He made uh, a tackle year. against the Chiefs, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, you got a bonus yeah. for that, yeah. $3 million. Yeah. 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 So you've got major financial issues. You're going to have to restructure a whole bunch of contracts. You're going to be able to acquire anybody of note. Uh, look, they're going to have a healthier defense in September because they're going to get guys back who got hurt early in the year, guys like Milano. Yep. You know, you're starting middle linebacker who you just can't replace. But they got problems in Buffalo because, you know, all of a sudden you take a look at the AFC East. And although you won four straight divisional titles, what'd you do with it? Nothing. You don't have an AFC championship game. You don't have a Super Bowl there that you're celebrating, right? And everyone else is going to get better and going to get closer. The Dolphins aren't going away. Terrible ending to their season. Yep. They were all banged up. I know we mocked the Jets. If Aaron Rodgers is healthy, the New York Jets are a different team. They're a team that's going to give you problems for the next year or two. My gut is that Sean McDermott doesn't survive next year. Oh, no. He comes into next year, head coach, you know, kind of fix their problems, steady the ship, fired Ken Dorsey, and they get to the divisional round of the playoffs. That's a bad loss for the Bills organization because you're at home and you had a chance to win the game and you didn't make the key plays late to take it and go to the AFC Championship game. I think McDermott becomes the scapegoat next year and they will have a new coach for Josh Allen two years from now. And that's the way I, th I know it's way ahead of ourselves. That's where I think it's going. But you can't win four straight AFC's divisional titles and have zero to show for it. Yeah. And that's what they've got. Yeah, but they've got it's. I hate to say it. You know, I always make fun of. It's just the same. Oh, oh Jets. Hey, hey, hey. Well, I could start singing that song about the Bills. Whoa. Oh, no, don't you dare. It's Craig, don't you I dare. Mean, it's don't just, you dare. I mean, it's, it's just the same. It, Buffalo oh, Bills. Hey. Yeah. He just threw in the Bills. Yeah. That's the oh, same Bills. Song. oh, Bills. Let's same just again. Yeah. It's yes. just the same. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Bills. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Boyle. Yeah. What are you yeah. talking about? That, that's, that's the reality of the Bills. Really good quarterback. Simeon, top five Tim quarterback. Boyle. Win the division. Get into the playoffs. And then what? So, wide right. Wide right again. Yeah, right. you hate I, to see I it, Jacoby. I, I don't even know. What there's you're changes doing. that need to happen. I, what those changes look like? Obviously, you need another. Oh. You need another weapon alongside of Stephon Diggs. Uh, but or. for me, when you have a talent at quarterback like yeah. Josh Allen, he's right. There's not a whole lot that needs to change. Yeah. Other than we have to win in the postseason when it matters. Yeah, right. but like the, that's, that's why they're the same old Bills. I'm well, actually no. going to fix the Bills right now. If you put that graphic back up there, because Which I, one? I have some ideas. The one with their, their salary situation. Yeah. First thing you can do is you call Josh Allen. You say, Josh, we need to, we're going to extend you. We need to take a team-friendly deal. We're going to smooth out this 47 the next year. Restructure yeah. the whole thing. Give yourself some room there. Stephon Diggs. If you trade him after June 1st, it's a $9 million hit. I think Stephon Diggs is not on this team next year. And you have it's going to cost you $9 million to, in a bad trade. You're going to get 20 cents on the dollar for Stephon Diggs, but I think they're a better team without him next year. And Von Miller, I don't know what you do with that. Yeah, but like, yeah. We're, we're overlooking it a little bit. Like it, This all comes down to just Josh Allen being this wild cowboy we love him to be. It's his decision-making that's cost the Buffalo Bills that playoff game. No, Throughout this didn't. season. No, it didn't. Yeah, I what disagree. do you mean? No the, turnovers. He played a conservative that, game. Coming out of that two minute, he had two opportunities to win that game for the Buffalo Bills, and he blew it. If oh. that was any other quarterback, we'd be talking about that last oh, drive. Oh, really? Really? It was, it was my guy, Deion Dawkins, the left tackle, who got pushed into oh, him. Oh, my. Chris, but at the end of the day, he still had a shot of throwing the football. Even before that, he had Stephon Diggs and Knox coming across the middle. He missed them both. We love talking about the money and everything. Listen, Buffalo Bills don't have a roster problem. You got James Cook. You got two great tight you got a great outside receiver, Stephon Diggs. You have Gabe Davis when he's healthy. He's one of the best. You yeah. have a solid office line. What else can you, you ask for the they Buffalo have a Bills? Quarterback problem? It looks like oh, it. Please. It damn sure looks like it. Oh, they don't have a quarterback problem. They've got a top <laughs> I five Josh, I thought Josh played great against the Chiefs. Okay. Okay. So how long are we going to continue to talk about he's him? A, he's a top five quarterback. No, he no, just hasn't no, gotten no, over no. the hump. Look, he restructured his deal last year, as Von Miller did, to give them some space. He can restructure his deal again this year by converting a lot of the money into you know, a signing bonus and all that. 
But you've got problems beyond that. Like you know, Greg said, you need another legitimate number two wide receiver. Mm-hmm. I don't think Gabe Davis is coming back to Buffalo. You do have a Diggs issue. Uh, and not knowing what they're going to do with this contract. Nothing before June 1st, that's obvious, yeah. because of what you said about you know, the value and the dead money it is against their cap. But you look, they've got other problems too. This is not a perfect team. Yeah, this is a team that's had a great run of it, good enough to win four straight divisional titles. But then when they go up against you know the elite quarterbacks in the league, or just they the have holes. not gotten the job and, done. Yeah, and Micah Hyde, Micah you know, and that's the reality. They, you know, Poyer's getting older. Hyde, they've they've got a great nucleus, but as Greg always says, it's hard to keep those guys together. Yeah. Either a because of financial considerations, or b injury and age. But, right. So I tell you the answer, and no one's going to want to hear it, but there is an answer for Buffalo. And that I is gonna say. hire Bill Belichick. I knew it. I mean, that's the <laughs> why, answer. Why would Bill Belichick go there? Why Buffalo? wouldn't he go there? What would You've he got get? the quarterback, you'd and go he's there a defensive Atlanta. genius. Like, to me, if I'm Bill Belichick, and maybe he has an agreement with Robert Kraft yeah, that's the not only. to go to the AFCs, and if that's the case, I get it, I respect it. But the Bills are in a much better spot than the Atlanta Falcons then are. Then you let Sean McGo- McDormand go now. Yeah, well, I'd wait till 9-11 and fire him on 9-11. Oh, but that's me. Okay. That's what I would do. Uh, okay. Because that's, that's poetic wow. justice. Right. That's right. Yeah. Hey, it's wow. September 11th. I see what you did you there. You're fired. Wow. Right. There you go. That's <laughs> what I, I see what you did there. Yeah. But that's, pow, pow. All, that's all preseason. All preseason. Have you draft? Oh, yeah. Have you played? 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 And then on September 11th. Yeah. I fire him right then and there. Yeah. Oh, Everybody Bart. likes yeah. the way you put it together. By the way, you guys can't see it. We have a 50-person uh, studio audience. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming through. Yeah. We appreciate it. Five of them like my idea. Yeah. Forty-five <laughs> are like, when do we get to go home? When's yeah, yeah, I thought they'd be bagels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, we got to take a very quick break. Uh, but after the break, uh, big press conference 24 hours away in Philadelphia. Does Nick Sirianni get the noose, or is Nick Sirianni going to survive to be the Eagles head coach? for one more year. Right after you this. are on a roll. <laughs> Look at handsome pants, Craigie there. Uh, one NBA thing, Joel B is a ball hog. And <laughs> he took 41 shots yesterday. No one else was allowed to shoot against uh, Victor Wamba Mama. And uh, he's, he, uh, he, he, he was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, 70, 70 points 70. last night. Uh, at home uh, for the 76ers, and he is, again, the reigning MVP and the easy favorite right now to win his second consecutive MVP award. Too bad uh, the Sixers will probably get knocked out in the uh, second round of the playoffs. The best thing about this performance. There you go. 1-3, zero highlights. Like they, <laughs> zero highlights. <laughs> and you know when you score 70 in the locker room afterwards, they hold up the like the wilt sign? Yeah. yeah. And so he, he did this um, after the performance, which is 70 holding up the sign is kind of whatever to me. But he had that sign. Yeah. He also held up another sign after it, which I thought was really weird. It's just zero Eastern Conference oh. Finals. Oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Truth hurts. Yeah, see it. <laughs> yeah. The truth hurts. You gotta win. I, I can tell you that. Win. Anyhow, big night. Um, he also had 23 uh, free throws. So, uh, like I said, no one else shot the ball yesterday. No uh, He outscored San Antonio all by himself. Let's stay in the uh, city of brotherly love, the home of the Tishy Pushy. Uh, the Eagles are holding a press conference tomorrow with Harry Roseman, the GM, and the embattled head coach, Nick Sirianni. Got two years left on his $35 million uh, contract and the fact that he's going to the press conference means one of two things. He's either survived uh, this year and the terrible uh, fall from grace over the last month and a half, or it's going to be the greatest surprise firing <laughs> of all time, which is what I'm rooting for. I never considered that, but that's yeah, exactly what I'm rooting for. Yeah, it's, it's what I'm rooting for. It's uh, you're the good a bad fan. person. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> It's like Joe Pesci walking into the room when he's going to get his button. Yeah. Uh, it'd be great. It would be. I would love Philadelphia so much. <laughs> I'd be I, would, nice fan. I would fall in love with the city of Philly <laughs> if they stabbed him in the back like that oh, and man. said, we come from Philly. Yeah. You screwed us. Yahtzee. Yeah. And do it in front of everybody live. Yeah. Because yeah. you want to see a grown man cry. You're going to see a grown man cry. Anyway, Nick Sirianni clearly is going to survive. Uh, I believe I know who they're going to hire to be offensive and defensive coordinator. Part of the deal, though, as the story in Philly goes, is that the only way they were going to bring him back 
is he had to agree to fire Desai, right. the original defensive coordinator, who got demoted but not fired from Matt Patricia. Patricia's contract is up. He's out anyway. And they're going to dictate who's coming in now to replace Desai and Johnson, who is the now no longer their offensive coordinator. I'm telling you right now, Frank Reich is going to be the offensive coordinator. Even though he's a failed head coach, he's still viewed as a bit of a quarterback whisperer sure. in the league. And he was a very good quarterbacks coach and worked for the Eagles a number of years ago. So there's some familiarity with the city and with Jeff Lurie and the franchise. And I do think Wink Martindale will be their new defensive coordinator. And I would tell you this. You guys can speak this better than me and Jacoby. I think those are major upgrades for what they had this past year. And I think you're bringing two competent guys in there uh, to now run the offense and the defense, and they'd both be good hires. Yeah, for me, uh, from the offensive side of the ball, it, it, whoever you bring in has to kind of reestablish the identity of the Philadelphia Eagles, right? And it all comes down to their run game. You can't have time after time. We, I know we have graphics somewhere. When they run the ball and they're efficient with DeAndre Swift and Gangwell, they're a better team. They're a safer team. They're a smarter team. Because yeah. it's not Jalen Hurts sitting back there trying to win the games by throwing big explosive plays down the field. I think Jalen Hurts was part of the problem, if I can intercede yeah, yeah, for a second there. interceptions. Yeah, not just the interceptions. You know, we started watching a lot of film late, like, why are the Eagles collapsing? And we did it on the show during the collapse. And it wasn't just him fumbling the ball when he fell down. There were a lot of times where he wasn't patient at all. Right. And letting a play develop, letting a guy run into space or get open, and he gave up on plays a lot this year as compared to last year. Yeah, and I'll go to the defense side of the ball. We've seen Wink Martindale. We know his resume. We've seen what he was able to do with right. uh, the, the New York Giants in a, a team that started off just giving up points to any and everybody that they yeah. wanted to, and then he finally corralled that defense and made them a lot bit more, more formidable. Uh, so we know if this team who led the league in sacks last year get a, get a coach like Wink Martindale to coordinate that defense, you got to believe with all that talent, they're going to get back yeah, to that. My only knock on Frank Reich, look, he failed miserably, and I think we all give him a pass in Indianapolis. You know, he went there with Andrew Luck, and all of a sudden, you know, two months later, he don't have a quarterback. Yep. So I think he gets a, a free pass on that one. Then we're like, man, Carolina's most dysfunctional ownership in the sport. Maybe we got to give him a free pass on that one. Uh, he's not going to be a head coach again because you don't get a third attempt when you failed at your first two, right? The issue with Frank Reich has always been, and I'm not knocking it because I respect it, but he wears his religion on his sleeve, and he spends a lot of time preaching. And there's some guys, you guys know this, don't want to be preached to. Yeah. And while they may respect you as a religious man and um, you know, you, you know, God-fearing man and all that, it doesn't have a place in every locker room at the level he's brought it to. It's why he and Carson Wentz got along so well. They're both very religious men. But some locker rooms don't want that. Just coach me. Don't preach to me. So I think if he can put that aside a little bit, no one's going to argue. He was a very good player himself. So that goes along the lines of you know, former players getting jobs. He's been a head coach, and he's been a successful quarterbacks coach you know, in, his, in, his, uh, in the league as well. So I think it's a good hire as long as he can separate personal from professional. Yeah, and I'm, listen, I don't care who you worship as long as you talk to the touchdown guys every Sunday. Right? Yeah. That's the end of the day. You pay Jalen Hurts all that money. He has to be a better quarterback, especially for this team. Hopefully he can get the best out of Jalen Hurts if it's Frank Well, you, know, you guys can speak this better than me. I, I've covered and traveled with teams, and I distinctly remember you know, when I traveled with the Philadelphia Eagles of all teams, back in the mid-'90s, Randall Cunningham started what was called the God Squad, and it fractured the team. It mm -hmm. didn't bring the team together. Yeah, so for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn in this situation because I'm a man of faith, and I, I, you, can't, you can't shelf that. It, it's who you are. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you have to understand and know when. It, there's yeah. a time and place. Yep. And you, you have to ca tailor it to who's being receptive of it and who's not. And, and you, can't, you can't push it on everybody. And I, I, I'm not one to do that, but at the same time, I am one to wear it wherever I'm sure. at, and, and that's who I am. I can't turn that off. It's not something that it's like, oh, today I am, tomorrow I'm not. Uh, but to your point, when it comes to Frank Wright, the number, what we do know that he can do is coach quarterbacks. 
And yeah. what we know that the issue that – one of the issues that the Philadelphia Eagles started to have was a, was a quarterback yeah. issue. Yeah. Regardless of how we want to look at it, Jalen Hurts regressed this year. And what I've said this, my kids know this, you guys know this. You can't have both. You can't lose and have no growth. And if you have a quarterback that was on the cusp and in MVP conversations and got the money and got, and you've paid him, yep, you can't now see that quarterback start to go in reverse. That being well, said, how great would it be if they fire Sirianni at the press conference live? I love like, that. The Philadelphia media is all there. You know, they're answering questions, and then Jeff Flurry goes, "Look, you're out." <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually think they're going to hire an offensive coordinator from within because there are some offensive minds in that building that just haven't gotten the opportunity, and they're actually already at the facility. We've seen them before. Who's this? It's the run the ball sign guy. Oh, I mean, like, what, like, that's that's what they need. That's all we say about this team that. is we've got two guys standing yeah. outside. They look competent to me. They look so, they're uh, available. They're going like this. The Philadelphia Eagles would like to announce that the new offensive so coordinators are Frank and Vinny. Yeah, yeah, the run the ball sign yeah. guys. And we're like, yeah. uh, who? You know, yeah. the, run the, the run the ball sign guys. Yeah. Can I By the way, question? that'd be so on mark for Philly. It'd be great. What Watch. happens if we have another debacle? Who's going to be? A, we're going to love it. We're going to oh, celebrate week four, it. Week four, Sirianni. Yeah. Out. But I'm saying you get a guy like Frank Wright for if in case there's another debacle. Like yeah, that. look, I don't think Frank Wright, uh, he's a failed head coach. He's very good with quarterbacks. As an offensive coordinator, they got all the talent in the world there. They just got to make sure their quarterback doesn't take a step backwards and takes another big step forward. Right. But I'll tell you what, if I'm a Giants fan, if I'm a Commando fan, and if I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, this is great news. Philadelphia is bringing mediocrity back. So here's a question Justin for you. Timberlake brought sexy back. <laughs> Philly's bringing me back. I have a question back. for all you about Wink Martindale, who's already interviewed there, right? There, Say we, again. I have a question about Wink Martindale, who's yeah. already interviewed with yeah. the Eagles. Is Brian Dable, an offensive-minded, young, first-time head coach, yep. and Wink Martindale did not get along. We re all read the reports after the season was over. It seems like they were at It didn't go well. All season long. Is there a part of you that takes that into consideration before you hire him to work for Nick Sirianni? No, no. Uh, because his resume is yeah, yeah, speaks for itself. Like, yeah. he is a top five defensive coordinator. You ask any team that he's ever coached for and any player Correct. that's ever played under him, mm -hmm. the, the players, he's beloved yeah. by the guys that play. And I put what happened in New York on two things. On Dable, who maybe got a little out of control based on all success and reading his own press clippings, which happens to a lot of guys. And number two, it's what a Stern Shepard told us last week. Losing sucks. Yeah. yeah. And when you lose and the manner in which the Giants lost this year, you know, it ruffles feathers. And it makes people get into their feelings because it sucks. Like, yeah. it, it, you're, you be, it's not just the players who are competitive, right? Like, coaches are competitive, too. And Hell when yeah. you have a coach who is as good as Wink Martindale on one side of the ball and he feels like, my, my side is handling yeah. business. What are you guys doing on the opposite right. side of the ball? And that was Brian Dable. I remember playing for Mike Zimmer, head coach, men's sure. Vikings. Yeah. And North Turner was our offensive coordinator. And we weren't getting it done as an offense. We were struggling with the quarterback situation, and we just weren't producing. And Zimmer, in a team huddle after practice, blatantly said, you guys need to we, – you got, we got to see you score points. To be fair, if I'm not mistaken, if my mind's off, tell me. Wasn't Christian Ponder your quarterback? Christian Ponder was our well, quarterback. Well, tell the GM to do a better job. <laughs> <laughs> right. With, but with a defensive-minded head coach, right. it's like uh, it. do something at the quarterback position yeah. or it's you. Yeah. And it happened to be normal. By the way, I'll tell you uh, in Philadelphia, yeah, because there's that, you know, that hate between Philly and New York, if I'm Philly – Wink Martindale is my only answer as defensive coordinator because, A, his resume is impeccable, and, B, I'm taking him from the New York Giants. I play that card all day, every day, and I think they're better off for it. Yeah, and I think you, the Giants are not. Yeah, but you also need some roster moves. That's secondary for the Eagles when we're atrocious, yeah. right? You got to go into the draft, maybe free, free agency, and get some guys who can actually play for you because you couldn't get off the field on third down, and you damn sure couldn't get a sack. So. They're telling me they want to hear more from you, Willie, but after the break. We okay. have to take a quick break, so maybe just save the next one. If they want to hear more from you, I'll be here. Good I'll be here. Want to hear more from you. We got here. first the football coming your way. And we have a question that uh, we're not going to find out the answer to until Sunday. We're going to have a little go at it. Can Kansas City find a way defensively to shut down the second-best quarterback left in the playoffs? Oh. We'll answer that question right after this. 
excited. So, obviously, uh, when the Bills miss uh, the Tyler Bass kick wide right mm. uh, for the second time in Bills' playoff history, and obviously it's Bills, Bills fans are like, oh, come on, man, not wide right again. Uh, those play-by-play -play calls are awesome. I found the greatest play-by-play -play call of the Bills' miss. It's uh, the Korean broadcast. Korean. Oh. So it's in Korea, okay? And here's how it sounded to the Korean audience listening to the final play of the Bills Chiefs game. I roll the tape, sir. 때문에 조셸런 선수가 오른쪽으로 나오면서 시간을 벌어봤지만 오픈된 미시버를 찾을 수 없었습니다. 4-4 드걸입니다. 타일러 베스. 오른쪽 한번 돌았어요. 오. Four languages are the best when yeah. it comes to uh, sports play-by-play, -play, and crazy. that's the Korean the radio thing about network. These announcers, they've actually been doing this for a long time. They don't just cover the games. They cover other events as well. They were at the Bills game. They yeah. were at the Bills tailgate even before the game. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. They, they were there. They wanted to do some play-by-play. -play. They were warming up. So we're going to see it here. They were at the tailgate. A little scene setter. The players have been looking at the side of the side, but they couldn't find the open day. They couldn't find the open day. Okay. Now the guys, they, they do basketball too. They do basketball, they do some NBA games. They got this. Oh. <laughs> they do baseball. They do all kinds of baseball games. They do celebrity baseball games. You know, they, they do a lot of oh, come on. Oh. 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 very, very talented. Very talented group of broadcasters. I like it. I Why like did your it. legs kick like that? <laughs> like Charlie Brown. I like found it. the best. You found it the doesn't best count as an error. I never touched the ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I, as I've told the story before in the show, the worst part of that is that Tom Coughlin came running out of the dugout to pull me out of the game. Oh, That's the first man. time he ran since 1975. 17,000 yeah. people at Yankee <laughs> Stadium, and Coughlin couldn't wait, could not wait to have me pulled out of the game at starting shortstop. You know what I'd have told you, Andrew? Can't win with him. Get him out of there. <laughs> Can't win with him. Uh, you're right. Yeah, uh, you're right. Anyhow, very good. And that's the Korean radio network. They do the Super Bowl as well. So Shout out Korea. Good job yeah. by – that's like the Kevin Harlan of uh, Korea. All right. Yeah. Uh, time now for first in football. And back to Jacoby we go. Next, we start a first down. Weird piece of news here. I'm going to summarize the whole thing. Kyle Shanahan told Brock Purdy that he might have to be the backup quarterback because they're bringing in Tom – Brady. There you and go. And then Brock Purdy was like, I guess if you bring in the absolute greatest quarterback of all time, maybe I'll sit. But I just showed you that I can play well in this system. What do you make of the news that Shanahan was going to bring in Tom yeah. Brady? This well, I, told, I said on the show a year ago that they uh, called Tom Brady to see if he was interested in continuing to play. Obviously, he wasn't, and he's joining Fox coming up this fall. They also reached out to Green Bay to try to get a deal for Aaron Rodgers. And why did they do it? Because while Brock Purdy had that great run last year, there was, A, no guarantee that the run was going to continue. Only played eight games. Mm -hmm. And as well as he played eight games is not a huge sample size. And number two, there was no guarantee that his elbow was going to heal and he'd be ready to play football in September. San Francisco is built to win right, right now. now. Not tomorrow. Not next year. Right, right now. now. Thank you, guys. So if you have a chance to make sure you've got the quarterback position solidified, if your young stud isn't ready to play, you'd be foolish not to make the phone call to both Aaron Rodgers via Green Bay at the yeah. time and, of course, Tom Brady, who clearly had more football in him and chose to retire after that second year in Tampa. So I get it. It's not offensive to Brock Purdy when you're saying to a guy with eight career starts, you're our future, but right now – we're going to go see if the greatest of all time is available or a guy that many people think is second greatest of all time in Aaron Rodgers, maybe the greatest Packer quarterback of all time. Right. That's just called doing your due diligence mm -hmm. on putting the best possible team on the field. I don't find it offensive. He shouldn't be insecure about it because on the heels of that, and him being ready to play, and Brady and Aaron Rodgers not going to San Francisco, what did the guy do? Played every week, got to another NFC Championship game. I believe they're going to the Super Bowl, and that's hard to match. How many quarterbacks in their first year and a half go to back-to-back -back championship games at a Super Bowl? 
you're in rarefied air when you're starting to talk about that kind of success. So I think it's interesting that they're willing to talk about it now because clearly they didn't want that story out back in August because there would have been blood in the water and people, there would have been a feeding frenzy about the future of Brock Purdy. Yeah, but John Lynch, is, this is on par to what he's done since he's been the GM for the Niners. It's always filling the holes, right? You brought in Chase Young because there was a pass rush problem, even with Nick Bosa in the lineup. You needed more pieces on the outside. So, you, you obviously, you got Ayuk and you got Debo and all these guys. But overall, man, the Niners are going for it, right? Yeah. And when you're Brock Purdy, no matter where you're at in your career, it's about the Super Bowl because you only have this short of a That's window. Right. So, he could have been in his feelings, uh, and he said he wasn't, but obviously you have to. Because you're he said, a competitor, you, and you feel like, man, I won every game I started. The only game we lost, I got knocked out of, which exactly. is why we lost the game. Yo, I thought you were giving me a chance to come back and be the franchise quarterback, which there was no guarantee about. You know, Trey Lance, we didn't know, was going to be traded. We didn't know until they acquired Sam Darnold that there was a possibility of a quarterback competition. But, dude, if you're a one-year quarterback, first year, and they're talking about you're the guy – but we want you to learn from Brady yeah. or Aaron Rodgers. Shut up and do it. Yeah. That's not a knock, dude. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not a knock, but you want to see the back end of that that comment that he made about, dude, what, what are you doing? What right. do you mean? I thought I, I was pretty good. I, I was pretty good in this system. Like, you want to hear those things if you're Kyle now, Shanahan. Now, here's my, my request. I just have one request to everybody else out there. Do not nitpick the word system he out said, of what Brock he don't said do it. it. He don't said, do it. Said, said, I'm pretty don't good do it. in this system. He didn't say I'm one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He said I'm pretty good it's the only system in this system. system. I knew he was coming. I'm pretty good in this yeah, system. I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't don't make do him it. a system quarterback. He said it. All right, and I wish he didn't use that word system. He's going to get offense, he said. When we first looked at it early this morning, I'm saying to myself, I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to bring it up. <laughs> I just texted the producer and said, bring up that full screen again. <laughs> Eddie, I love, At least you understand. He, he, look, he's one of the great stories yeah. in recent memory in the NFL uh, because of where he got drafted, because of the success he's had. And it's very rare to see a young guy who has had bad games. He had a bad game against Green Bay. He had that three-game stretch you know, when he lost to Cleveland, Minnesota, and Cincinnati. And he kind of looked a little bewildered. And you know, his passes you know, were, weren't all crisp. And you know, he looked overmatched a little bit, to be fair, during that three-game stretch. And yes, he had a concussion against Minnesota. Yep. So there's excuses we can make for sure. But what's amazing about this kid is that he's never lost the locker room to a point where guys go out of their way to say big things and positive things about him. And he's a really good quarterback who wins a lot more than he yeah, loses. Yeah, they go as he go, right? And he's been able to recover after all the bad outings he's had this season. And what you love about him going forward is that he understands that it, he has to be better with the football in his hand. Sure. And so he's accountable. And that's what players want. There you as long go. as you're accountable for what you do. There on you tape, go. And you don't point the finger and you're not like it's this on guy. Me, it's on, on me. Coach. It's on me. It's on me. Guys are going to rob Now, you, you got to – also play better, but I, I hear what you're saying because we lived it with Zach Wilson yeah, a year yeah. ago yes. when he took no accountability for the Jets' offense. Bad comparison because they stink, but I appreciate the fact that you guys want that dude in front of the yeah. cameras saying, it's on me, I let everybody down. Yeah, that, that, that's, that was my takeaway. Like, when you stand in it and say, my stuff stinks right now and I need to be better for my guys. You did it yeah. yesterday. You were great at it. Which, by, yeah. <laughs> by the way, I'm going to give you guys a little love right now, if I may. And you did have a bad tree yesterday, but we do a lot of shows. <laughs> no, you, we, got, we, got, we got four days to go and you stunk the place up. I mean, yeah. We had to fumigate after the Much show. Much more concerned about the um, smells. I will, I will the say this. There's a guy that did it perfectly on Sunday. And that's Jordan Love. Yeah. yeah. Jordan Love came out and said, I made a mortal sin. Yeah. And it's on me, blah, 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 blah. And I, that does play. That does play. And veteran guys, although I know they're a young team, respect the hell out of that. Moving on to second and football, let's discuss Andy Reid. Andy Reid, the coach of the Chiefs. And we always talk about Lamar versus Mahomes. But there's also this Chiefs defense against Lamar. And Andy Reid talked about the challenge that he presents. You have to stay in your lane. You have to stay disciplined with with any quarterback that runs, Lamar is special. He, he's a, um, you know, he, he's fast and one of the faster guys on the field when, when, when it's all said and done. And he throws it well. He throws on the move well. He runs the ball well. So we've just got to stay on top of that part of it. 
A couple days ago when they played Josh Allen and the Bills, there was this back and forth, touchdown, touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. Do you expect the same sort of scoring rhythm that we saw in the Bills game against the Ravens? I mean, not from the Kansas City standpoint, no, because the Baltimore Ravens defense is special, and no one's going to score on five consecutive, six, whatever yeah. it was, six consecutive drives. That's just not going to happen, and that's not a knock. That's just keeping it real. You know, the Bills' defense was shattered with injuries. And while you give Kansas City credit for exploiting those injuries and those mismatches, no one's scoring five consecutive possessions against the Baltimore Ravens. That being said, I think the Ravens can score five consecutive possessions against Kansas City. Because huh. while Kansas City has an above average, I even say very good secondary, and they do from time to time have an elite pass rush, you can run against them, and the Bills proved it. Now, You've got the best rushing offense in all of football in the Baltimore Ravens, plus the quarterback, who's a big part of that. Right. He ran for 800 yards this year. And I just think there's too many mismatches in favor of Baltimore's offense. Kansas City's going to need to score 30 to win this game, and I'm not sure that they can do it against this particular defense. Yeah, you know, Baltimore doesn't panic either, right? They know who they are, and they're going to stay, to, they're going to stay on par. And all, at the end of the day, it really comes down to the defense. There's going to be some key matchups. There's going to be that linebacker core against Pacheco and Kelsey. Can they stop those guys? There's going to be Lamar Jackson. If he's forced to stay in the pocket, because Andy Reid's not dumb. You allow him to run the ball, and he's throwing the ball well, game over, right? So you're going to have to keep him in the well. But the fact that, you know, when you watch him this year on tape from the neck up, he's making better decisions with the football. He can actually throw the football. He's not even throwing inside the seams. He's actually throwing the ball outside the seams. So he looks like a more complete quarterback. So if you're the Kansas City Chiefs, really what you have to worry about is not just Lamar Jackson. Is how do you score against this defense? Because they're punching in the mouth early. And that's what, if you've ever been punched in the mouth, and this is just, just talking. If you've ever been punched in the mouth, you grab your face and it's a pain like you've never felt before. Right? You start questioning, how did I end up in this situation? Right? right. And so, that's what Baltimore does to their opponents. They punch them in the face and they hit them early. They hit them often. And it's going to be a big question, is Kansas City tough enough to against the Buffalo? Yeah, and uh, I, look, uh, and Pacheco becomes an even bigger factor for Kansas City because if Baltimore shuts him down, and I'm not saying they will, but if Baltimore shuts down Pacheco, Kansas City's offense becomes very predictable. Yes. Oh. We act like this guy behind us is not playing in this game, and that guy behind us is Patrick Mahomes. Like, he's the great equalizer. Like, as, as good as we all believe and know that the Baltimore Ravens are, like, we still have to respect that guy. Sure. They still will respect that guy because of what his track record has proven and continues to show. Like, in my opinion – with what they've been afforded in week in the first round of the playoffs, in this the last round of the playoffs, the divisional round against the Bills, obviously a couple of days ago, like for me, that allowed their offense to gain confidence in this mojo to where it's like you have to now look at them and say, uh oh. Are they, are they trending in the right direction, or was it just a splash in the pan? Well, with Patrick Mahomes, you have to believe and err on the side that this is not just a splash in the pan. This is a team that is striving to find their identity and find their stride offensively. And any time you have Patrick Mahomes under center, you, you just have a chance. And so I don't think this is going to be a blowout. I think this I is going to be a very competitive game. Even defensively, as great as the Baltimore Ravens have been, shutting down, and I, they shut down. Niners and the Stroud. Dolphins and C.J. Stroud. They're going to beat the hell out the Chiefs. I, we I'm can say you. that, but it has I mean, to happen. You know, I mean, we have tape. You know what I mean? Like yeah. We have what he did to Tua at home. We have the Niners. Then you talk about what he did last year. Like the, Niners, the Ravens. Tua is not Patrick Mahomes. C.J. Stroud is not Patrick Nobody's Mahomes. Nobody's Patrick Mahomes. Let's but if you talk um, about the top quarterbacks in the league, they just put him in a body bag week yeah. after week. Let's continue this during the break because I'm fascinated by what you both are saying. Uh, we got, do have to take a quick break. We got, <laughs> we got winners and losers uh, from this week coming up. <laughs> mean guy. <laughs> no, I'm really – you go first. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. we'll do it during the break. I'll be right here, by the way. Winners and losers I'll be right here. are coming up right after this. Come yeah, on. Yeah, more drop. All right, welcome back to the card show. It's time now for the weekly voyage yeah. to winners, winners and losers. losers. Let's start off with division around winner, big time winner, and that is my guy right there, Mr. Jared Goff, who has taken the Detroit Lions to their first divisional title in 30 plus years and now has the Lions on the cusp 60 minutes away from a Super Bowl appearance, yes, Jared Goff 
Big winner. Big winner, and not only that, man, he has the opportunity to go back to the Super Bowl and kind of wipe that stank off him. But he has to go through San Francisco, man. He's doing it back home, so he's got a shot. And for a guy with one year left on his contract, my man is going to get big money. Same. Double winner because yes. of that. Like, if there's a year to have, when it's when you're under, when your contract is expiring. Yeah, that's Jared Goff right now, and and to do it in Detroit, a franchise that's had struggles at quarterback. Obviously, Matthew Stafford was phenomenal, but he wasn't able to accomplish what Jared Goff has done. He's going to be paid. Yeah, he's not a double winner, though, guys. He is a triple winner. Triple winner. Yeah. Yes, that's his fiance, uh, Kristen Harper, who's uh, a friend of the show. Yes. As you all know, uh, Jared Goff. Big winner, big, excuse me, Every day. big winner. Yeah, I got a little there crazy right there. A little bit. All right, Christian, a little while. come back there for me. I'll see you later, baby. All right, that's that. Number two, uh, Josh Allen, a divisional round loser. loser. Oh, because Josh Allen had an opportunity to beat his nemesis, Patty Mahomes, in the playoffs. He had the ball. He had open wide receivers to get the ball closer to the end zone, guarantee the field goal, and maybe overtime or win the game outright and milk the clock. And despite having a really good game, both with his legs and his arm and a lot of his decision making, final drive, open dudes, yep. Josh Allen couldn't get the job done. Zer. Yeah, and the focus no. during that game was to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field by running the ball, right? And they kind of fell asleep in the fourth quarter in the running game. But I thought the Bills tried their damnest. They just couldn't get past Patrick Mahomes and what he could do with the football in his hand. And they were banged up, but no one cares about being banged up. You had a chance to win the game, yes, had the ball at home under two minutes to go, and just couldn't get it done. Yeah, so if my memory serves me correctly, I'm going to go back a few few months, actually, when you guys, you in particular, oh, you. Brock Purdy against the Cleveland Browns, he drove them down, and yeah. the field goal kicker actually missed a kick. All, yeah, you, all you cared about was yeah. he got them in position. That's right. Josh That's Allen right. got them in position. Yeah, Josh Allen also missed two wide open receivers Correct. for touchdowns to win the game. Yes, go. Uh, Stephon Diggs dropped a deep ball. It was very important. Talk Sherfield, about Sherfield dropped two deep balls that were Talk very important. Yep. The defense that was, that was could tough. not stop Patrick Mahomes. If the, the Bills did lose, and he is a quarterback, he's the leader, but this was a great game from Josh. Yeah, it was all, everything that happened to the Bills was self-inflicted. Bottom line, drop passes, missed opportunities, missed field goals, you go home with it. Not Josh Allen. All right, division round winner is the third best quarterback in all of football, and that, of course, is Brock Purdy, uh, the best quarterback in the NFC. Overcame his own bad performance, game on the line, season on the line. Yep. You got to go 75 yards and lead your team to victory. And what did Brock Purdy do? He delivered. He was money good on that final drive. And that includes a drop, <laughs> by the way, by George Kittle on a big second down play midfield. Brock Purdy overcame his own bad performance and led San Francisco right into the NFC Championship game. Brock Purdy, big winner, big winner, big winner. Yeah, now you got to go home. You, well, you don't got to go home. You just got to win the NFC Championship. That's last, a lock. It's done. Well, last time you was on the field, you lost it. Yeah, Brock Purdy's going to be in the Super Bowl, boys. So you have something to say. Yeah, it was a big winner, man. He he overcame him, himself. Yeah. Because in that line. You guys do not I, like Brock Purdy. No, I, 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 I didn't not, want you to make this not he like He wasn't him. the best quarterback on the like, field. When, and here's my, here's my, the only thing I'll say about this. When you've performed that badly or that poorly. Yeah. You better be the reason why we end up winning. Yeah. And he did that. He did. He came back. He came back. Quick comment. I thought he was, I thought Jordan Love outplayed Brock Purdy. How'd the game end again? Uh, not as well. <laughs> was the final play of the game? Uh, oh, that's right. Mortal by sin Love. by yeah. Jordan Love. Yep. <laughs> My bad. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Belichick, a huge postseason loser. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, the greatest coach of all time can't get an interview anywhere. The only team that's brought him in for an interview are the Atlanta Falcons. And there's a huge fight right now in Atlanta. Arthur Blank's the owner. He allegedly wants him. But the entire front office is like, we don't want him. They'll be fired. Now, to be fair, if Belichick comes in, you're all fired. 100%. The owner usually wins these battles and should win these battles. But it's fascinating to me that they've now done a second interview with Belichick, a second interview with Harbaugh as well. And there's not another team that we know of that has called Bill Belch again for even an interview. Loser. Yeah. Loser. Loser. But, but who's the quarterback? That's the problem, right? If you're going to bring Bill Belichick. Kirk in, Cousins will be their quarterback if he goes there. You think so? Yes, yes. Okay. If he goes to Atlanta, Kirk Cousins will be the new quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. All right, let's go to our winner. I got to say, I have to say it. 
Joel Embiid, winner. Definitely. Dropped 70. 70 points on 70. San Antonio last night, and he is not even close right now. The best player in the NBA. To be fair, no one else was allowed to shoot last night, <laughs> but Embiid took 43 and shots. They should not have. But he dropped 70 uh, in his only matchup in Philadelphia against Wamba Yamba Mama, and the Sixers look pretty damn good right now. Yeah, at the end of the day, like, listen, it doesn't matter what you do in the regular season, but they need you to kind of put on a, you know, Hoist a banner, can you get it done? Cannot get it done. Let's stay in the NBA for a loser. That way we juxtapose winners and losers. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, 62 last night. Oh, yeah. loser. Yeah. They lost the game, and afterwards, even his own head coach said he was hunting for the record. Yeah. That wasn't about playing team basketball. We played like crap. 62 in a losing effort. He had 62. You're like, wow, what a great game. He had 50 with nine and a half left in the third quarter. Oh, wow. And then he tried to shoot the entire time. And not only that is, at the end of the game, when they needed stops, they took him off the court on defense. Imagine having 60 points and yeah. your coach is taking you out because you can't play defense. Yeah, not a good look, but uh, two big offensive nights last night. Be a Knicks Let's uh, right. get a couple more in here. Uh, Dan Campbell, huge winner, winner. across the board. Yeah. Going back and watching that first speech when he got the job and now seeing how it manifested itself three years later into an appearance in the NFC Championship game. Obviously, you got to make sure you get your quarterback signed up you know, long term, but that is a very good team, a young team, and he's done a great job bringing some respectability back to the city of Detroit. Yeah, he's definitely a winner, especially, listen, Detroit Lions got a head coach for the next 10 years along with a quarterback. The issue right now is his coaching staff is about to break up. Aaron Glib is interviewing for head coaching job. Yep, so, defensive coordinator. Right, so who, whoever's in place right now, he has to bring in people who can steady the ship. That's going to be his biggest challenge. Great story. Yeah, I love what Dan Campbell has done. I mean, previous year, 9-8, and eight, almost makes the playoffs, just misses out, but this year, he capitalizes on it. They don't go in reverse. They actually jump on top of the division. And, man, it's just a great story. I hope it continues. Yeah, and when you talk about the voyage or the trip to get to the NFC Championship game, that Rams game was no joke. Yeah, yeah. That was the toughest game, and now they find themselves really uncharted waters going to San Francisco against the best team talent-wise in the NFC. He has this, this personality, and he has that initial press conference, in, and I'll just say like, he's got this sort of like meathead reputation. He starts out 3-13-1. And then the next season, his yeah. second season as the head coach, they started really slow yeah. out of the oh gate. My so there's a point in time when you're looking at him, you're like, he this guy is fired. not a head coach. I thought he was fired. He said he thought he was fired. He and said after he lost way half through, halfway through the season, he was like, I started packing my bags. I knew I was out of here. And then it to, was a to team be where they are now, it's, it's a great turnaround, and it's, it's just a great demonstration of identity and consistency. And they're gritty like him. They play like him. Yeah, oh, final one know. for you here. Uh, look, I respect the hell out of Bills fans, but Bills fans being asked to shovel snow for uh, 20 bucks an hour, uh, before the game against uh, Kansas City and not being given tickets to the game. Like, oh. do you enjoy shoveling snow that much that you want to go there and shovel snow for a couple bucks? A bunch of losers, losers, and the king loser for the Buffalo Bills is this guy we're going to show you right here who thought there was no way the Bills were not going to win oh, the Super Bowl this no, year. He, that, he got the like full-fledged Buffalo quality. Bills tattoo. It hasn't been colored in yet, obviously, but... He has a chance to maybe cover it up now since the Bills did not win Super Bowl 58. And there's video of him bemoaning the loss. <laughs> Shockingly, no girlfriend in sight. Speechless, topless, 10 below, bad tattoo on his skinny arm. And that tattoo's not going anywhere. He was sure this was the year that the Buffalo Bills overcame and won a Super Bowl, oh, Greg Jennings. Do a push up. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> why can't he get the tattoo after they had possibly You would think that's what yeah, you would do. Yeah. You would What's think the, you'd wait for them to win and then be the first guy in line for the tattoo. He was so confident. But what's, yeah, the, what, what's the win get it premature? I love the fact that Greg's not worried about the tattoo. He's, right. he's upset that he's got spaghetti arms. Right. I love yeah, that. And also, like, he, not, he has a bunch of other tattoos. That's like his <laughs> only tattoo. It is. Oh, that's like, yeah, yeah, there you go. That guy's been in a couple yeah. bar fights. He has a water on him, man. Anyway, I, you feel bad. That's real. That's passion right yeah, there. Yeah, you do feel that's bad. That's fandom right there, where your people mock guys and gals who live and die with their team's success and failures. That is the picture of a Bills fan, true and true. It's a horrible tattoo, too. And it's a bad tattoo. It's a bad tattoo. Yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. All right, listen, bar. we got one more segment coming up. We'll get to the headlines. Big press conference coming to Philly. Debo Samuel, is he playing? And let's ask the question that sports talk shows now have to ask. If you had a choice, 
for one game only this Sunday afternoon. Are you taking the MVP Lamar Jackson or the best player of his generation, Patrick Mahomes? I think the answer is easy, but we'll figure it out after this. Some headlines and some big news out of the Bay Area. That man, Debo Samuel, Who? was hurt on that hit, re injured his left shoulder. Ah. Is he in? We don't know. Is he out? We don't know. Right now, it's 50 50 for the NFC title game. How important is it? for the Niners that he's on the field. Well, he's arguably their biggest weapon, right? So it's pretty important, and they don't have a great record when he doesn't play or finish a game. Uh, all, obviously, you know, winning against Green Bay without him on the field you know, changed the narrative a little bit. They were winless prior to that without Debo Samuel in the last year or so. Uh, look, he's 50-50. That means he's playing, right? If he wasn't going to play, they wouldn't come out and tell you publicly that it's 50-50. The question now is, how much can he play? Can he absorb a hit to that shoulder? Because right. the defense is going to know, I'm targeting that shoulder if I get a crack at it. I'm going to try to drive him into the ground if I get a crack at it. But I think it's uber important uber. for San Francisco, uber important uber. that he's on the field, even as a decoy, because he's so damn good at everything he does. If I'm Detroit and I'm game planning now against the San Francisco offense, he's the first guy I think about because he's a jack of all trades. Sure. They line him up as running back. They line him up in the slot. They line him about wide. They send him in motion. And he's one of the you know favorite targets, obviously, of Brock Purdy. So there's no doubt in my mind, now that the MRI came back and the X-rays came back, that he didn't refracture the shoulder, he's going to be on the field. And him being on the field alone makes a difference for San Francisco. Yeah, you're spot on. He's a Swiss Army life, but he's also a security blanket for her. Yeah. Brock Purdy. Uh, let's be honest. If Brock starts to get in a situation, well, like, you know, Greg mentioned how many times he had to throw the ball last Sunday. Well, you don't have to do that with Debo in the field. It's about getting the ball in his hand and let him do what he does. There's no question to me that the, the 49ers are the better team. I mean, they're favored by seven in yeah. the NFC Championship. For good game. reason. And for the Lions to win, they're going to need something like Debo to get not be available or Debo would be on the field just being a decoy. Because this game, to me, in my opinion, is going to be a blowout if – Unless something happens, turnovers, Debo not being available, it's going to take something like this to keep the Lions in the game. Yeah, I think, really? you know, I think you have to look at what Green Bay did successfully against them. And maybe the weather's a factor, or maybe just let's give Green Bay some credit. You know, whatever that offensive game plan was, San Fran's got a great defense, not a good defense. And their front four, they don't have to blitz a lot to get to the quarterback. But what did Green Bay do really well? Time of possession lengthy drives, yep. even if they didn't score, they took six minutes off the clock, seven minutes off the clock. So I think for Detroit, you don't want to get in a gunshot shoot with these guys, shoot out with these guys, you lose. Their offense is too good for you to go back and forth, score, score, score. You can't maintain that, in my opinion, the way San Francisco can. I think the run game is huge for Detroit. The controlling of the clock, milking the play clock, and all those things that limits how long the San Francisco offense is on the field. Look, Detroit is not as good as San Francisco, and that is not a knock on Detroit. They're a really good team, really well coached, very aggressive. They have an identity. They never waver from who they are. Very aggressive. They'll throw the ball. You know, it's second and two and third and two, regardless of the you know, uh, clock situation or the time of game. That could also bite them in the ass, yeah. how aggressive they are. And I just think they're running into a buzzsaw this week. I think the game that San Fran was beatable in was the Green Bay, Bay game for a lot of reasons. And you don't see San Francisco have back-to-back -back bad games that often. I think Detroit's in trouble. Yeah, I completely disagree. Go ahead. I, when you, especially when you talk about they don't want to get into a shootout. Shoot, De Detroit. Well, he, they will invite a shootout because what a shootout means is we're, we're scoring points, which is what they do, and your quarterback has to throw the ball and score points, which is what they don't really do in San Francisco. For me, like, the key to success for Detroit is to get out front. You, we've seen the 49ers and Brock Purdy kind of struggle and falter when they are behind. We, he, he proved that he can right. come from behind in last week's game. Yeah. However, consistently can he do it? In this type of moment, in a championship game, to get to the Super Bowl, can you play from behind? We've seen them struggle from behind. But Detroit, they, 
I, I don't like using this term, but they don't have anything to lose. Like they're playing with house money, but they have a belief and a confidence, and it's real for the first time in forever. Yeah, I look, mean, that's yeah, they're, they're both Detroit 60 fans. minutes away from a Super Bowl, right? So I'm with you. I think we overstayed. They got nothing to play for. They got a trip to the Super Bowl yeah. that they're playing for. There's pressure on both sides. Uh, yeah. More on San Fran because they're favored, and they're at home, and they're the number one seed. But I'm with you. That, that whole house money thing is ridiculous because Detroit hasn't been to a Super Bowl ever, right? So now you have a chance to go to a Super Bowl. There's pressure on them just like there is on San Francisco. Yeah, and I think you, you, you hit it right on the head. Like Shanahan is, I think, 1-30 uh, down by 7 going into the fourth quarter. If they can find a way, if Detroit can find a way to keep this tight and make this a gritty type game in the fourth quarter, and Val, I understand what Brock Purdy did last week, but if they can find a way to keep it on the ground and keep Brock Purdy off the field, they can squeak away with this thing. Yeah, but they're not going to find that way. And I'm not disagreeing with you yeah. if, you, if, if, if some butts are sugar and nuts, right? Uh, the, the Detroit story – comes to an end this weekend against San Francisco. And that's not knocking Detroit. It's being honest. So you said they don't have a shot. It's being honest. Let's just be honest. I know, look, I know we want a good game. I don't have a rooting interest in the game, and I don't gamble. I don't think you guys have a specific rooting interest outside of being from Michigan. You want to see Detroit win. I respect that. But you didn't play for the Lions, nope. right? So to me, if we're just going to be honest with ourselves, San Fran ain't losing this game. Just keep it real. Let's not lie to the audience. The audience knows this. I respect everybody in Detroit thinks the Lions are going to win. You should. They're your team. But if you want to be honest, they're not going to hold a candle to San Francisco in this game. I mean, I mean, we can't say definitively that the Lions are not going to win because they're still going to play the football game, but it's going to take some Dan Campbell fake punts. It's going to take some explosive plays from Gibbs. It's going to take the kitchen sink game from the Lions. Yeah. And, and I think that they're the way going to they talking, that. they shouldn't even get on the plane. Like that, that? That's one, one way to think of it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's an You're option. Like, that save us all the time and money. That's for sure. <laughs> Look, they're not winning the game. Stop. It's embarrassing. There's a road back. You tell me what was embarrassing. It's about like Gibbs and golf and a ball state brother. Everything they've been golf. able to do. Yeah, there's Sayers and McMahon. Sure, fine. Come on. What are we doing? We, you guys sit here. I know you. I, I, just hate, I just hate to hear you say there's not a shot there's in hell not a that shot. the Lions. It cannot well, they're happen. They're favored by seven, it, so it's easy to it, say that. Yeah. They're I'm favored not, by seven it, points. What does that mean? We said this with – we, and I say we, outside of Willie, said this about the Green Bay Packers right. going into the, in Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. Dallas. You, you stood like, on the desk and was like, Dallas. There's no Dallas, chance. This yeah. is a Green flaw. Yeah. 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 I got that one wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's oh, right. Okay. I got that one wrong. I own it. I couldn't have been more wrong. So what do you do when you're wrong about this one? I'm not wrong about this one. I'm not wrong often. You guys know that. You're wrong every week. week. And look, I I want this to be a game. I got three hours. I'm sitting on the couch, happy. Grand Marnier and Coke, nachos, third hand down the pants, just keeping it comfortable. Just in case something goes down. That being said, I, I mean, we can't lie to ourselves. Let's just keep it real. They're a great story. Jared Goff, great story. Dan Campbell, awesome story. They're the kings of the division now. But they're going to get bitch slapped. But I shouldn't say that. I apologize. Pimp slap. No, that's not the right one either. They're going to get embarrassed. They're going to get embarrassed by San Francisco. Because you know the old saying. I heard Brock Purdy say at his press conference yesterday. What? What did the five fingers say to the Detroit face? Slap. That's right. And that's what's going to happen on For Sunday. For some reason, you may be wrong about this, Craig. Okay. And by the way, to be fair, Brock Purdy didn't say that. I was just being hyperbolic. <laughs> Great. Moving on to our second headline. Uh, I'm glad you had to clear that up. We have oh, yeah. the former yeah. recent MVPs, Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, will face off for the first time ever in the playoffs. Yeah. The question is this. Lamar Jackson had a better regular season. He's the MVP yeah. of the league. Yeah. However, yeah. Patrick Mahomes, less weapons around him, but has that playoff experience. Yeah. What do you think is more important? Um, I think how you're playing right now is probably more important than anything. But Mahomes is different. We have to acknowledge that he's different. And he's the great equalizer here because talent-wise, uh, I think Baltimore's just better than Kansas City and has been all year. So I think we all are in the same boat. America's in the same boat that it's easy to say Baltimore's better, but 
Patrick Mahomes is different and he's special. And as good as Baltimore is defensively, he's unique in what he brings to the table. Uh, and that's why people are hesitant to come out and say, like I said about San Fran over Detroit, come on, Baltimore's going to wax them. They're a much better team because we all have so much respect for what Mahomes brings to the table. Here's my issue. I saw them go into Buffalo and struggle defensively to stop the Bills' offense. That's what I saw. And I also saw the fact that the Bills ran against them at will until very late in the game when they figured out how to stop Cook on three straight carries. Right. And then Buffalo kind of went away from it saying, we better start throwing the ball to try to win the game. I also know that the Ravens' defense is special. Yes. Different than any defense, to be fair. Kansas City has seen all year. They had a very easy schedule when you go back now and look at it. And I don't blame them for it. It's not, you know, you don't pick your schedule. So they're going up against a team now that represents something they haven't seen all year. A great offense and a great defense. And I think they're going to run into a buzzsaw against Baltimore. Craig, I want to show you how special that Ravens defense Go. is. This is what they look, get, look like against the Texans, right? This is pretty ugly. If you're in Texas offense, this is what you produce, right? Punt, punt, field goal, punt, miss, field goal, punt, punt, down, end game. <laughs> oh, that no. was the offense for the Texans, right? Yeah. That's what the Ravens D did to them. So if you're in the uh, Chiefs right now, understand this is what you're going against. You're going against mis- uh, ma- matchup nightmares, right? Kelsey and Pacheco are going to have their hands full. You talk about a pass rush led by McNoy and Metabique. They're going to be stout up front. And you talk about a secondary led by Kyle Hamilton and company. They don't let the deep ball go over the head. So what do you have? Nothing. So as much as we love Patrick Mahomes, he's never seen an outfit like the Baltimore Ravens and what they plan to do to him in the championship look, game. Look, I'm with you in lockstep, and we've said all year this is not the same Chiefs team as in the past, and now we're trying to answer the question based on what they did against Buffalo. Are they back? No, they're not. I give them credit for winning on the road. But remember, they beat a team that was missing eight starters, most of those starters, on defense and lost a couple guys during the game. Yep. They had no linebackers. Uh, on the field, the Buffalo Bills uh, in the game, and Kansas City didn't just wax them and beat them easily. This is a different ball game when you go up against Baltimore because there's no weaknesses. I'm not saying Kansas City gets shut out. I'm not saying the Mahomes doesn't come up with some brilliant plays and Andy Reid comes up with some plays that Baltimore's never seen before. I respect what they've done. Andy Reid's in what? His 11th championship game, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. I think he's four and six in championship games between Philly and Kansas City. So there's nothing he hasn't seen. But go back and look at every Kansas City game this year, and you tell me what great teams they played against. They didn't. And Baltimore's a great team on both sides. Yeah, Baltimore's a great team, and I I love what they have. When you look at this on paper – the Baltimore Ravens have the better personnel across the board, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. However, when you look at it on paper, you also understand that one team has Patrick Mahomes. That's right. And, and that's, again, well, I, I will continue to say this. But well, why do we discount Lamar what he's been able to I'm do not, in I'm his maturation period? This, this is not to discount Lamar Jackson. This is to give credit where credit is due. And Patrick Mahomes. This man is going for his second MVP, Greg. I, uh, this year, by the way, not Patrick Mahomes, How many Lamar Super Jackson. Bowls, though? All right, too. Right? And Lamar hasn't been there. But this is an opportunity for Lamar Jackson, with how he looks on tape, to dethrone Patrick Mahomes. It, and I, and, so and I saying, agree with that. And I agree with you from saying this standpoint. I understand what Patrick Mahomes is, but I think their homegrown quarterback is going to show up and play. Because he has to, because of how we judged him. He said he couldn't throw the ball uh, outside the numbers. He said he wasn't a leader. He said he, all these things against like Lamar Jackson, he's all pushed to the side. So, for me, I know who Patrick Mahomes is. And I do agree that the fact that he is world godly. At the end of the day, Lamar Jackson, because what he can do with his legs, and now that he can throw the football and make the best decisions with the football, I think he's equally the, probably the best quarterback on the field. And, and I hear everything that you're saying. Yes. I do. And I believe that Lamar Jackson is very hungry. I believe that he wants to follow through on the Super Bowl that he promised this organization when he was first drafted and overlooked by all these teams and franchises that didn't even think he could play quarterback. I believe all of those things. However, I also know what can be true as well. That guy is coming into your house, and and, and he's the reigning champ. And he's the one that continues to get there. Despite what he's afforded outside and around him, he finds a way to get it done. And in order to get what you want as Lamar Jackson, as hungry and as thirsty as you may be, you have to take it from him. And that's what's going to have to happen. 
So, Greg, I'm, I'm going to ask the, the obvious question, right? Would you rather have Mahomes or Lamar Jackson right in now? this game right now? Yeah, I'm going to just, just this one game, this not one clear game. wise. Yeah, yeah, this I'm going Lamar Jackson. I'm going Lamar Jackson. I'm going Lamar Jackson. Oh, I go Patrick Mahomes. I'm going Lamar really? Jackson. Really? Yeah, and I obviously Lamar Jackson's the MVP, yeah, and that offense like, is going I don't great. I like doing this because I best really like in Lamar. Football. I really like it. It's not, it's not a knock. But it's, I, I'm with you, Greg. I'm not it's not a knock. Going you, against but you say that like Mahomes. Mahomes. Now, no, I want to be clear. Um, Lamar Jackson is the MVP of the league. He's having a great season. The offense is ridiculous. But to win one game this Sunday, right now, the only quarterback I'm taking in the league is Patrick Mahomes. And it's not debatable in my mind. Of course, don't oh. forget this Kansas City Chief team did lose to the Raiders late in the year. Oh, yeah, come They lost out. to the Denver Broncos. Yes, sir. They oh, lost yeah. to the Philadelphia Eagles. One close. Like, this is not a dominant team. Mm -hmm. Great game against Buffalo. Buffalo's playing a JV squad. So I think they're, they're in for it. And uh, it could get ugly. It could get ugly. Uh, that being said, we'll be ugly again tomorrow. Oh! <laughs> because that's what we do well. We have WTF Wednesday tomorrow. What? More Christian Harper and more football talk.